Hello everyone, and welcome to the Immortal Break the Game Weekly Alpha Edition number 24. I'm your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, joined this week by ZK. How's it going, ZK? Pretty good, pretty good. Excited for this tournament. We have eight competitors signed up this week, many of them returning for the first time in a long while. So excited to see what they come up with after such a long, long uh, time away. Flicky is one who we have not seen in the longest time, and we are going to be seeing them today in our first game, in fact. Oh yeah, I'm excited for Flicky. Flicky used to participate in a lot of tournaments. I think he had some issues with his computer or something. He's fixed it up, it's good to go. And uh, yeah, he's been playing a, a decent amount of in the past weeks. So I'm really curious to see what we were going to see against Itlander, one of our uh, one of our other players that have been there for, for a little bit longer. Yeah, so it's... Well, we will find out in the game now. Yeah, exactly. So in the top left, we have uh, Itlander playing as Zol. Uh, and the mortal has been pretty popular lately. And his opponent is going to be Flicky in the bottom right as Zol as well. Zol's mirrors are getting very popular these days as there has been a bit of a discovery about Zol, the commander, which is that they can really wreck buildings. <laughs> like, really badly wreck buildings. That That's going to get patched, but at the moment they can do a lot of damage to buildings, or she can do a lot of damage to buildings, so it's going to be... It gets Zol a lot quickly. Yeah. Well, oh. so far, very standard opening here. We see as Flicky opens up with... Um... Uh, Flicky opens up with an ad, with an uh, altar first with two double E for after opening with this first uh, base. Third side, Itlander, he went for E for a bit faster. Uh, so he's going to be able to take up just a slightly faster than Flicky. We'll see how it turns out. It can help Flicky get a bit more map control, getting his bone stalkers slightly faster than his opponent. So that early map control is always fun to get. On top of the expansion, Flicky is going to have an easier time setting up in the mid game. Itlander. They won't have too many problems. They're still getting their military up quickly enough, but keep an eye out for Flicky's third when Flicky builds their third base. See here, Flicky setting up his teapot in the north, trying to see the path pathway. So that's a really nice spot actually for anyone getting into the game. See so up your teapots at the at the top of the canyon. No units can go through and can really see a good part of the game, a part of the army, and be ready for when they char start charging onto you. Of course, it seems oh. So, Baron, this, like we said before, Zol is a big thing. Flicky and Itlander both going for the nearby Pyre Camps to get enough Pyre to summon Zol. Both of them are trying to go for this early expansion kill. So, whether they... It's kind of a question of whether they meet, up, meet each other up in the middle of the map or are able to just go past each other like ships in the night and then get into each other's main bases. Yeah, exactly. No, both of them, both them just uh, ready to go for the action. Itlander is ready to just head back to his tower and heal up instead of getting in. Of course, Itlander does have his teapot to scout exactly what his opponent's doing. He sees the Godheart going up, so that's a nice signal for him. Yeah, they know Flicky is going to be going for air very quickly. Yeah, uh, especially since there's no Amber Room, that's pretty much what you go for. Once you don't have that, we'll see the Bone Canopy go up ex right at this time. So he's going for his lovely Frums to check out everything. Itlander, on the other hand, we... I haven't seen a whole lot of sign about where they're expanding to, or what they're expanding, they're, what they're attacking up to. Early as a call is a solid choice against Zol, but it's not the best. It doesn't shoot up, so Flicky does have already prepared for this. Like the Thrums will deal with the Zakals reasonably well, so Flicky is on the right track for taking the advantage, early advantage of this game. Kills Lake Landers a bit stuck in the past patch where we had the, the I cores be extremely powerful. Those, ooh, that's a nice catch though. Units coming back and it landed catching him right on the retreat. He'll get a few units and surrounds them entirely. That's a great catch from Itlander. Yeah, Flicky losing all their early army. That advantage I was talking about, it is it is becoming a bit more tenuous. Itlander, they're they're jockeying to get into that main base. Possibly yeah. the natural. Flicky. Flicky's Flicky gotta was... be careful. Ooh, I think I'm gonna get this moat. Flicky... This moat's not been spotted. Yeah. Hey, Symbio got away. Yeah, Flicky was thinking of getting his third very, very quickly, but after all losing all his units, he you know you won't be able to defend that. Getting Omnivore as early as possible to help defend, but it's just an Aerovore right now. Won't help. Frums and Zol needs to summon Zol to defend this. Uh, Army advantage remains in Atlander's hands. Thrums are unable to do enough to make a difference. And Itlander pushing hard is nothing in the way. Flicky desperately trying to use Zul to defend. The rest of their forces have gone down. 
This natural expansion is looking very doomed. Yeah, that's a lot of trouble. Dissolve disappears on Flicky Sight Lander Stazer for a few more seconds, but as, as the reinforcements of Fleet come in, is it Lander going to be able to get the base? He's still attacking it. Flicky's coming in with his units as fast as he can, but is it enough? We'll find... Let's see, Flicky is able to at least distract it, Lander, away from the expansion. Flicky's defense is a little bit pyrrhic, but it is successful. He really needed to defend that base. Without that, that base survival, that would have been the end of the game. And, oh, he has two God Hearts. Oops. Yeah, they're, that, you want the extra health from the God Heart to avoid Zul just sniping your base. Oh, wow. Okay, so Flicky really knows what he's doing. He's thought of this through. It, it's <laughs> kind of funny. Like you, It's actually harder against Karas because the Acropolis has higher health. But against yep. Zul, against against Aru, Zul is particularly effective just because of how quickly that summon Zul can get rid of a, a standard Grove Heart. Yeah. Well, we see Itlander's army is still getting very buff and powerful. The Frum, more about the harass, but there's not enough Frums to head in the base and force his opponent back. So Itlander pretty much has full map control. Teapot seeing everything, seeing his opponent back up. So Flicky can at least relax and knowing his opponent isn't still coming for his throat. And he takes that time to expand with the Teapot detecting everything. Well, it's detecting its own demise. Giving Itlander enough information to know how behind they are. But again, Itlander does have a significant military advantage. Like, they just they just need to apply that to economy or getting rid of flickies. But yeah. not in a particular hurry. Itlander are quite confident that they can just build up their third and then when they feel like it, smash flickies down. Yeah, we're looking at the at the army value at the bottom, 2700, 1300, and the army supply as well, 62 to 30. Itlander just has a commanding lead in every army metric. Of course, this isn't the end of the game. We're still pretty early. But if Itlander decides to pounce, Flicky will need to have the proper response to survive this push. Those more importantly, they're saying, no, Itlander has confidence they can just use small chunks of their army to explore around the map and not lose because they're so far ahead. Yeah, exactly. That map control is powerful. And he can get all those derelict towers on the map, getting a bit of extra power as he runs around the map. And Flicky can't really do too much. He has a few units that can help out. Uh, but neither of them really going for... Oh man, the Frum's getting caught out immediately as soon as they try to get out. That was more than that came from with Flicky. Right, care, is, care is required, but Flicky's... Oh no. Flicky's not too concerned. Oh, that first Frum goes down. He has the Bone Stalker ambush, but it's not quite enough as he tries to charge the opponent. Itlander microing back his weaker units. Azal comes at the back and tries to do as much damage as she can. And everything's pushing forward. Is it enough? Itlander come in with his own army of Frums to reinforce his army. And the push is coming. And Flicky doesn't have much anti-air left. The push is still coming for Itlander. And what can Flicky do? Flicky can run. Flicky's only got to run. The third is in dire straits. And they, so are they. Game one goes to Itlander. Woo. No, oh, man. Itlander getting that very early catch on those bone stalkers. Pretty much caught the end for Flicky. He, he saved his natural, but I was just uh, putting it out to later because he there was no way he was coming back into that game after that. It was such an early catch. An expensive oh. catch like that. Oof. I think I think Flicky might have had a chance if they if they were a bit more defensive. Like they really need to hold that expansion. Their only hope was to rebuild slightly faster with their economy. But yeah. that that was it. Oh, was Lost Province allowed this tournament? Uh, no, it's no. not. It's only Next frontiers. tournament it will be, but this tournament it's not. Flicky, unfortunately, coming back, to, he, he'd like to go back to Lost Province. As a, it's a map he knows well as it's been active, and when he was active, Lost Province was the map. But now it's about Canyon Frontiers, our newest 1v1 map that we really want to show off and have fun with. It was a fun map on Canyon. Seeing okay, a few, then we're good. Seeing a few of those... Uh, seeing a few of those little... Fit, Little errors we can, a little uh, tips we can have, like putting that teapot on the high ground to see your opponent coming through, and all those attack paths coming all around the map. Yes, <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, I think we're. It sounds like we might have lost province in the one v one tournaments starting the next one. Oh, I'm but I'm not one hundred percent sure. Yeah, we'll yeah. See next what... time, not next week. Yeah, the next yeah. next one v one tournament will probably have lost province back. For now, hey. though, it's fine. Hey, yeah, next, it's... we'll probably have lost province next week as well. For two v two. Yes, you're right. We will have Lost Province next week. That is for sure. <laughs> no doubt about that one. It's Hell just yeah. the yeah you know, one v ones is the thing. Yeah, of course. And Frontiers and 
Frontiers and Canyon are two, uh, 1v1 exclusive. So we'll see them quite a bit this tournament. We'll have fun with them for sure. As at this time, we're heading back to Frontiers land. As we get into it. What is... Oh, it Flicky the Atlander switching up yeah. to Warsum. All right. Yeah. And Flicky sticking with Zul this time around. And still going for the fast expansion with his symbiote heading out just as early as it can. And I'm expecting something similar from Atlander, but going for Aether first. Well, we, we've seen it quite a bit as well. Like, uh, it, it's been... The current meta is really a bit more diverse. And do you want to expand first, get the Aether first? It's really nice to see those builds develop on how people want to play. It's been a lot of experimentation. Yeah, I think Heatlander is not at all worried about this potential result coming from Flicky. Oh no! With force, like, we, talk, we talked it up, but Heatlander was able to just deflect Flicky's forces well enough in the first game, and just completely stop Flicky from even getting like Flicky didn't even get in their half of the map. Yeah. Now, nah, Flicky, Flicky just got completely contained at that point. Atlander took complete control of the map. We'll see how Flicky reacts this time. Or zoom, sometimes a bit harder to get on top of on, into the map. Of course, you can get uh, those powerful units like the Dervist or the Absolvers pretty quickly. But if Flicky goes for fast runs again, he'll need to get his anti-air up as quick as possible as well. It's it's a question of whether Flicky does go for that. They, I mean, their early God Heart was the clear sign earlier. Flicky's apparently clued in. Not upgrading the God Heart early enough to be completely visible. Mm. Yeah, well, Inlander still has his teapot and the Bone exactly, Stalkers yeah. immediately. Bone Stalkers come in. Ah, okay, now the teapot goes. Teapot. Now we might. Now we should see some sign of what Flicky has planned. Yeah. Inlander on his side, heading up to the second building, immediately getting a uh, 1 to take up. Either to get the Angelian Arm to deal with those early frums. Or, you know, just to get those more advanced units, you don't want to stick on Zentari for too long. Oh, those Zentari Not are so beefy. against Mass Bone Stalker. Yeah. yeah, but against Mass Bone Stalker, you're going to want to have other options. Pretty much anything the Soul Foundry will do, but you want something. Yeah, a little bit of something to help deal with those woes. Little Bone Stalkers, you know, having a javelin yourself is not, it's not how you want to live your life. And, uh... No, it's like, it's, you know, people like getting gauges, you know, the kind of like, the thing where you have a pipe kind of pushed through part of your body, but it's not really, like, abdominal gauges aren't really that great for you. Yeah, well, maybe if it was made by a doctor, but I'm not sure do those bone stalkers have their degree. And No, no, they, they dropped out. They dropped out very early, actually. Yeah, they... no, unfortunately, when you wash out of medical school, you, you go become a bone stalker. That's part of our society. Mm. Yeah. It's a, yeah. it's a strange system, but, you know, we have to respect their customs. I don't know if they want to do that. They want to do that. You go from uh, scalpel to toothpicks. Well, giant toothpicks, I guess. That, uh... It's actually kind of a giant scalpel in a way. Yeah, I guess. I guess. You, you could use it to cut through the... Yeah, you can use it to cut through the skin and get into that burning embers. Exactly. So, you know, it's, that's that's the whole point. It's just, just a little less precise, that's all. Oh, wow. I'm sure the bone stalkers get pretty precise, you know? For an eye for an eye, they go for the eye immediately, and... They just gotta aim oh, well. That's a good point, yeah. Man, that's a, yeah, so just very very quick battlefield brain surgery then. Mm, yeah. Those dervish, of course, can just slice and dice through for, for everything, so not necessarily scalpels, just uh wing daggers, I guess. More like a more like a buzzsaw. Yeah, <laughs> it's like well, we're, we're, going, we're going for surgery into woodworking here. I mean you can also have surgery, you know you need the limb removal. Dervish are probably the best bet for that. You want it to do as little damage as possible. So dervish are ready to jump on top of you and take care of it. Exactly. You know, oh, when you got, you got a buzzsaw against plant people, it's perfect. Yeah. We see that Flicky does love his early expansions, doesn't he? Wow, they went for a... Th Sheesh, that is daring! Oh, yeah. And they don't have the forces it. to hold this either, not with a dervish on hand. Oh, but there's no anti-air here, and the ah. thrums come out immediately. Okay, well done. Well played, Flicky. Well played. Hold the third with the thrums. That was... Oh... Yeah. Right, like right in time, but man, that was that was clever. Yeah, we see Atlander has played against this type of player before. He's getting two sentinels from the get go, and is Flicky still heading out on more and more? Rums are sticking out free. No, he's really massing that. Yeah. He's going up to at least six. Now, nah, Zol, the the current way of Zol is pretty much six to nine thrums, just constant. Like Thrum Bone Stalker has been the core of the Zol composition for a few weeks now. 
Yeah, it's a fun way to play, you know, you can really get map control, get around the map. Just gotta be careful, those Sentinels can take those down pretty fast. And ooh, barely survives. Survives the dance of death. Oh. Oh, swaps out. Flicky's pullback, it's not bad. Oh, didn't lose a single from there. Of course, behind all this, Itlander gets map control on the right side and is ready to attack the base again. And with the Sentinels here, those Frums won't be the only defense. He, he needs more than just the Frums to defend this. I was super careful with that. It's the it's the Dervish that's the problem, really. It's all coming down. Try to deal with it. Able to get some distractions here. More importantly, able to set up for the Bone Stalkers. That's the lander. Michael from Flicky really getting his units behind the wall, getting range units against all those melians, really pulling their weight. And with that, Flicky pushes back his opponent, and he's a base ahead on the on on his opponent. That's what he needed. Yeah, Itlander. Man, for all the armor competition they had, Flicky just caught, like I said, good micro. Also some good numbers. Just making Itlander scared. Because Itlander doesn't want to lose their army, obviously. If they lose their army, they're done. And the Itlander knows it. Just picking off picking off the Zentari, leaving... Yeah, the Dervish can deal a lot of damage, and the Thrums can take care of them. So it's like constantly having to worry, like, for Itlander, constantly having to worry that Flicky might just be able to take out their army completely. And you know, that's all Flicky needs to do, provide the threat. Yeah, but now it's a very scary idea from Midlander. As you said, it's a technical army. With those Dervish, take care of the Bone Stalkers. Uh, he needs a few more. Flicky needs a bit more complicated of an army right now, as Midlander can just jump on him with those Dervish and cause so much pain. Flicky's entire army is optimized for Zentari. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the thing. It's a very anti Zentari army, which is not where Midlander's going. Midlander knows it. They're not going to walk Zentari into it. They've gone. Literally everything else that they can get away with. Yeah, really not going for those. Uh, really can stop making Zentari entirely, getting his third much later than his opponent. Doesn't matter because, well, Flicky's going to get his fourth when he can afford it. <laughs> I like this one, Flicky, yeah, you know? Th those for it anyway. Yeah, those type of play styles where it's all about getting uh, getting those bases, getting the economy up on your opponent, and then overwhelming them with more forces. We'll see if he ends up getting that Arox and want to jump on those Sentinels. <laughs> But if they don't, then Itlander just can't send the Dervish around. So Flicky's... I, I'm, I think the Flicky's composition is starting to come together. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Itlander had a small window where he could possibly done some damage. He didn't hit it quite yet, but that's fine because he was expanding. Itlander had an early lead and just keeps feeding on top of it. The Frum's never able to get any damage, but those Dervish might... Just to come around going the side. In. Okay, yep. They're, they're going for some economy kills. Slick. No, let Flicky get away with too strong an economy Ooh. for too long. Of course, for too long is a relative term. As the Dervish, well, they they went, they cut up, and now they're gone. Yeah, those saw arms are not going to be able to cut for more Aru Bark today. Ah, uh, well, today probably, but for now they'll just head back home and find a next opportunity to pounce as Itlander keeps building up uh, to his dream composition, which. I'm quite curious what he wants to, what he's heading for. Uh, the Hallowers are coming out. That tracks. Yeah, you oh, don't yeah. want to have to deal with. You don't want to necessarily have to deal with. Especially there's a call close up. And it's just the, yeah, smack from a distance. Atlanta's got the right idea. Yeah, smack from distance, take no damage, kill some units, and then you just repeat until your opponent is out of money. Atlanta's four bases won't be enough to defend this, but of course, for now he has his four bases. Oh, even mines coming out for detection. And slow down his opponent nice. if he tries to surround. Flicky, on the other hand, fully teched up. Those Howlers have a chance to help out, but it's, again, it's really a question of when. To, if the calls go away, then the Dervish can re wreak havoc. But that's that's where the Howlers have to come in, and the Howlers are now just coming in. Yeah, Howlers can do some decent damage, of course. Need to be careful as behemoths. Not, not many of these units shoot up. There's a few Sentinels left. But the Arrocs are still on the field, so... And with Wraith Bulls as well, this is a decent composition from both sides. It will all come down to the engagement. Who can really get onto the top of the other ones? Because I was coming in, but all those Bone Stalkers were invisible, and you can't see them. You can't see invisible stuff. Yeah, what? I'm... Is it Lender building a detector? Because they're going to need that. Especially for Howl as a spotter for the Howlers. Yeah, if they want to keep shooting and not just get jumped on. Oh, but he's ready for the fight. But that was a nice art from Flicky. Flicky takes advantage of it. Azul comes in. Flicky wants this fight. He's heading for it, attacking right into it. 
A few units of Vitlander are heading on the on the left side to get Zol. Zol gets eliminated. Do a decent amount of army for Flicky. But the calls are enough. gone. The calls are gone. Vitlander has no real concern. They can just push right in. Their dervish are not threatened by anything. Oh man, the, the dervish can jump on top of all those units. Bone stalkers coming in as reinforcement. Sentinels. Don't want to die to anything and want to get on top of those behemoths. Behemoths running back home. Sentinels might just get one of them, but the Wraith Bows are, are present and s push those Sentinels away. Whew. Flicky ends up ahead. Not not a clear victory, but Eatlander did end up getting advantage on the army supply. They did end up pushing back. Flicky lost a bunch of the front liners. They're going to be relying more on behemoths for handling front line. Like for screening, but they're not done with the Zakals. Yeah, I need to be careful what type of engagement they're, they're heading for. And Edlander taking a forward tower. As Flicky keeps exciting to the west, getting his fifth base up while Edlander's still on free. Uh, yeah, if the game keeps going, he'll have an advantage. But at this point, Edlander going for a kill gets one of those behemoths, but four, two more on the way. Oh, it's tough for Flicky. They have Flicky turning all the castigators. Not able to keep their units alive long enough. Zal popping it down as well. And Itlander taking advantage of the distraction. Just start wiping out the behemoths. Wiping out some of the forces in between. It's still not enough that Itlander can't hold. But with a good solid retreat, they can still just pick away. Keeping Flicky's army low. Itlander's army was very, very... Uh... Wasn't that powerful. And at this point, Itlander had sent his entire on the west side. Take care of that tower. Getting out the vision. And whatever more havoc these Zentari can do, this little Zentari hit squad, gotta love those little hit squads heading on the sides. And while all the army is focused on the east side, there's nothing really to take care of them. And I love this from Itlander. Itlander is able to get their fourth now. They're starting to still like managing to stay in surprisingly well, considering how much Flicky has been able to maintain an economic advantage. It's just a question of unit composition and positioning that's been a bit of a struggle for it, for Flicky. Yeah, Flicky's never had a big jump in army army value. All his money is going back into the economy. He hasn't had a big jump where he can get to like that 224 supply that he can get to. Still halfway there, but his opponent also is since Itlander's been putting so much money in his army. Heading for the Ancient Doe. And that's where the big battles begin. Flicky with his early opening lead. Itlander going for this round. Looking to find some damage on Flicky's army. Able to get rid of the Behemoths as well. Flicky. Folks more on the Resonance, getting getting a back line that they can hold. Meatlander can only go so far, but the question is, can they still damage Flicky's army enough? And the answer is, Flicky can hold, going around the back lines, trying to find the right damage, but losing the behemoths in the process. And if Flicky... Flicky's not even able to hold the Ancient anymore. It's getting close. Though, Itlander. Neither is Itlander. Itlander... Yeah. Falling back while Flicky does manage to finish off the Ancient. But a Pyrrhic victory for Flicky as they lose all of their behemoths. Yeah, those those, uh, those residents at the back line doing so much damage, forcing Utter to not to engage too powerfully. Uh, while he did have his Hallowers, Hallowers don't have as much zone control as those residents. So Flicky able to hold that ground, get the Ancient. And that pyro count back to 180. That can make such a big difference in the next fight. And he'll need it. As you said, he lost all his behemoths. And uh, those were pretty much his biggest front line. Well, go in. Great hunt. The Hallowers won't have a chance. Let's see if that's a Flicky does. The... Flicky reinvesting in economy once again. Going for 6th and 7th expansion. They're playing this really close to the wire as far as army value goes. Like, sooner or later, they're going to have to convert into army value, and when they do, it looks like it'll be very strong, but Yetlander has a giant window to start messing with Flicky right now. Yeah, and those Brones coming in, and there's not that much anti-air. Those Bone Circles didn't come in and try to deal with it. And he has a decent position, but the Hallowers at the back dishing the damage, those Ray of Light coming down on all those units, and he gets mowed down so quickly. Flicky, reinforcements coming in. Yetlander... They have the defender's advantage. They have significantly stronger army coming in here. Though they have to rely on that defender's advantage. <laughs> like most of this is Antari. They need the hell on the ground. They so Flicky does at least have room for a contain. Yeah, it's a decent contain, especially with his base on the Wait, that... on the west side. What? Itlander, Itlander finally sees it. Flicky, oh, okay. are you serious, Flicky? I mean, we knew this was here, but I, we hadn't actually seen it on screen yet. Yeah, Itlander. 
It <laughs> Lantern's gonna start searching around for these expansions. I think they might have clued in that something's up here with Flicky. Yeah, and Flicky, because of that, just heads for a counterattack. Love it. Those Hallowers are in position. Can't defend with those two towers really helping in the defense here. And that's what uh, yours are for. Get the towers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Inlander coming back in to help defend, and those units might not be enough. Those Frones can really dish the damage. What a great arc from Inlander on this push. One Frone does end up going down. That is that is enough of a loss to pull Inlander back to regroup. But again, that's Orzum. Fall back, those regroup, wreck, it, wreck your opponents that come in. Though, Inlander losing a fair bit of supply as well as a tower on that. At the cost of Flicky's army. We at Lander yeah. maintaining that defense. Oh, get getting the, the resonance. resonance. All the resonance are gone there. There's two more resonance get in the reinforcements. And all the initial ones in that bush are dead. And he's heading for the tower, but that's not enough units. Good Lander is going to come right back in. And uh, oh. Flicky needs to be careful if he decides to keep engaging on this. Flicky can't engage this. Flicky cannot hold this. Eatlander knows it. Goes for the resonance directly. Getting a little bit out of position, unfortunately. There's one thing that's working out for Flicky there. Elander might have overextended. Now it's Flicky able to get the Ancient once again. It's always dangerous engaging on that bridge with so, with so many choke points. You gotta be careful when you want to engage those resonance, get those bonus on the AoE. And yeah, Flicky's gonna get the Ancient for the second time this game. Great advantage on his side as Elander stays back. He doesn't want to keep engaging. Can I say, Flicky's really been using Summon Zol very effectively. They lost an expansion, mind you, but they kind of got six. But they've been using <laughs> Summon Zol in general for their armies. It's like they've lose, They're losing here and there, some some of the units, but by and large, Flicky is punching well above their weight in terms of the army composition and army value yeah, just with smart use of Zol. Yeah, he definitely can, especially with how much money he's been accumulating in this game. Yes, that's true. A bit more. He, can, he can afford to lose a bit more army and just get his opponent out of position. I just Itlander going for his fifth base right now, and that will equalize with his opponent. Uh, who's been on fire for a while, but he was able to mine out part of his opponent's uh, base. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they got they got that one. They've been on seven for a bit. They're on six right now, and their main should be mining out soon enough. But still, we should start seeing Flicky just start ramping up army production. They don't have anywhere to expand to, so they might as well just throw it all into army. Yeah, they, they kind of need to throw, throw it all into army. He needs an army can deal with his opponent pretty well. And this army might not quite be it. The arrows can go on those thrones, but there's only one throne left on his opponent. It's not the army you need to go for. I do love going back into Frums, though. Getting those Frums in can go for the harass. Just need to be I mean, careful. Really gone. There's, what are you yeah. going to do? <laughs> the thrones aren't doing that much. The cast scares nothing. And the arrows scare one of the thrones, opening Itlander wide open. Flicky looking to take out the tower, but the Hallowers are holding the line. Itlander is somewhat able to defend. Flicky looking to bait Itlander out of the hallowed ground. Managing to do that once again. Zol comes in to help deal with this. Hallowers have her extended. Itlander losing their artillery as Flicky gets the surround, gets the tower. And now Itlander's forced to retreat way back into the base, has no central map control left. Uh, he has his towers. Orzum Zobal defending towers. As long as he has that, Itlander has a dream and, and a chance. But now Flicky. Not sure you want to keep pushing with only Wraith Bulls, though. Wraith Bulls are <laughs> and they are not great against Atari. <laughs> Well, they did their job against the thrones. Or they exactly. helped, anyway. Yeah, there's no more thrones at this point. If Flicky needs to decide what's the next army composition he wants. Uh, I don't think Mass Bone Stalker is a solid late game composition. If you got the full up. Like, Mass Bone Stalker's got some spellcasters against Karath. Like, a couple oh, yeah. Red Seers with the Blood Plague is just. And then you have the upgrade for the Bone Stalkers. Yeah, that's a solid choice. Yeah, that's and what I'm It looks like that's for. what Flicky is going for. Yeah, and on the other side, we have the Sharu coming out and ladder. Sharu great at the holding ground. Those stars are pretty much what will stop Flicking for really be able to impose his will. Oh, did oh, Ray Flicky well, wants it? It's, that's a question of how well they can work without being able to see. Flicky doesn't even care about the Empire and Broken, just pushing in. Fortunately, they are a little behind, and then high tech from the Idlander is working out. Thrones able to wipe out all the Bone Stalkers that have come in. Forcing Flicky back once again, and Flicky doesn't have much of an army behind this. Unfortunately, has not been reinforcing in the meantime, so Hitlander gets an opening to work with. And what an opening it is, and he sees it, he takes it, and his army value escalates six times more than his opponent. Flicky needs to rebake his army quick and dirty, 
He needs something to deal with this army. But that's such a high-tech army for Hitlander. I'm not sure if Leaky has what it takes. We'll see what he comes up with. As he said, Spellcaster is always great at these type of engagements. But Hitlander is coming for the counterattack, mm, heading for those bases. It's going to be hard, though. Like, the Red Sea used to be perfect, but getting those setups is going to be quite tricky. And it doesn't look like he has been doing that, judging by how, just how much ether they still have. Aerox looks to be the choice of choice. And against this force, those aren't going to last very long either. Unfortunately, Flicky's... Like, that that was a massive blow losing the army to Hitlander's main base. And now Flicky's desperately trying to rebuild something, but losing... Maybe losing base after base at this rate. Those swords coming down to the right place. The base heading down for the swords and Tari. Hitlander doesn't need to keep poking. Decides to head back before he loses too much. Reinforcement Flicky just a little too much for his army. A lot of high-tech units. Uh, but not quite enough frontlining to defend it. Now, Hitlander, <laughs> Hitlander's entire focus has been on the ether heavy air, air, air superiority. Yeah, oh, the Dervish coming oh, in. Oh, back to Dervish. Okay, solid choice. I mean, when you have your opponents going full on Bone Stalker, solid choice to counter that. Yeah, Flicky has been have does have trouble right now. All he has is a he's E for Star. Uh, he's pretty much E for uh, uh, Alloy Star at this point. Alloy Star, yeah, I'm thinking Ether Star. Yeah, yeah 2000 Ether. I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. You always want more Ether, right? That's you what I'm thinking. I, I'm really surprised they haven't gone for Red Seers just to burn Ether. Yeah, well, those Ostrikes are doing their. The Ostrikes are showing the power of Ether units. Those Spellcasters are just <laughs> yeah. burning down all of those Bark units. And yeah, those. Their Bark was maybe more than their. Than their bite, than, than the bite. Thank you. <laughs> it wasn't quite enough on this time. <laughs> and that gives Eatlander a solid 2-0 win on the winners' quarterfinals. So we are moving on to, or we'll be moving on to the next game. I th expect to be Santa and Flicky, sorry, Flanner and Eatlander for the winners' what? semis. What? No trust in Lake Deer, but of course Lake Deer already lost. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, like there another player. No, actually, it's technically like there's first time participating. Um, it's a uh, yeah, like there's a fun guy. He uh, he participated. He he participates a bit in the dev team. So a fun guy tries to improve. He's not as good as his uh, counterpart Ocean Elk or uh, Sea Moose, but he always does his best to come in and out of uh, of tournaments. Uh, but of course, next round we'll have Santa versus Itlander. Seeds two and three of the tournament, showing off what they can do. See what Santa has come up with. Santa always known. Santa has always been known for having some uh, Santa strategies. Another way of yeah. saying uh, another way of saying that uh, he does whatever he wants and hopes it and makes it work any way he can. He is the one that brought up the worker rushing in the mortal and used it to great success. To uh, my utter con uh, consternation, I wasn't expecting it to work, and he makes it work. <laughs> I mean, it took a, it was take a, it took a while for them to actually really get that set up, though. I'm not like, sure. It, I'm pretty sure I saw it like in a two v two tournament at first with him and his ally both doing it, and the opponent just not knowing what to do against it. Because oh, that's true. Yeah, but then yeah. it's like it it worked once. That yeah. was the thing. The big surprise, and then after I was like, well, can't work again. He tried many times again. Yeah, it worked sometimes, but then people were like, no, you can just you can defend this. I like the idea of a two v one though. It. it if the two bases are separate enough, you can just really jump on them. Then the, mm -hmm. the ally also needs to bring his units while yours are rebuilding. It's an interesting way to do it. Of course, I'm not expecting Santa to rogue rush. Unless he does, because... Santa. I he don't gifts. know what to expect from Santa. Yeah, do you he's a gift I really don't know. Do you have a canyon? Okay, so Santa has been doing a lot of weird cheesy stuff on Frontier specifically. Like that Zol timing stuff I was talking about, that's all Frontiers. So now, like, they want, they are asking for Canyon. What did they want from that? Mm. Like, what do they expect to get from Canyon? Yeah, well, Canyon's a bit, it's a shorter rush distance than Frontier, which is the big point for it, it. So I, I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. You, you can get to your opponent much faster than you can on Frontiers. So there's a few, yeah, there's oh. three different timings you can hit a bit faster in that way. Of course, uh, you have to go for that Canyon. That Canyon is... Uh, well, you'll see your opponent coming through the canyon if you put your teapot like Flicky showed us in the first game. Oh, yeah. So, in the top left, we have Itlander playing as Zol once more. And on the right, we have Santa playing Mala. Ooh, Mala. Haven't seen as much of her lately with how much attention Zol has been getting. So, quite happy for that, seeing a Zol versus Mala, an Aru mirror, but not the same Immortals. And that can make the world of difference. Oh, yeah, especially these days. Oh, yeah. 
of the Immortals coming on the map, Zol always an extra unit that can pop in at any time to just change complete tides of a fight. And but then Mala is like just upgrades there. Like you kill a bunch of Mala's units, great. The next set of units is upgraded. Oh yeah. So have fun with that. And even if they're not upgraded, you can still red harvest and get some quiddles to jump into the yes. fight. Rears yeah, so it's more, that, it's more that Mala, Mala just has a lot of ways of sustaining. While Zol has a lot of ways of of cutting down very specific targets. Which look, makes a lot of sense. Would you look at that? that. Itland, Itlander heading for double altar, no expansion, wants to be aggressive. Of course, on Santa's side, he did the same thing, except he got one Efer. So he'll be able to tech up and get that offering. At least that's my 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 guess. Get a bit of uh get a bit of Efer to tech up to something interesting. I have no idea what they're going for. I have not seen Santa go for I've seen Santa go for Gazal. I've not seen Z Santa go for Mal in a long time. I was thinking maybe the Amber Wound so you can get some Icors out, but not out off of that's two an, Alters, well, right? Maybe, maybe, but that's a strategy that before Zakal got buffed to really deal with it. They yeah. could go for that. It's still not, it's not a bad idea, but it's not off of one ether you yeah, exactly. can do. Yeah, exactly. That's usually a two ether strategy. Yeah, he saw the double ether, so he knows no. Neuroside coming down. So Santa getting the offering, which will allow his mass hunters to get a little extra boost in speed to jump on our Bone Stalkers. Uh, but for for the meanwhile, Bone Stalkers are slightly faster. Santa has to play a bit more defensive. He doesn't want to get caught out. Of course, I say that he has so many bone. He has so many mass hunters. Oh yeah, no. As long much. as as long as Itlander can't get around the mass hunters. Yeah. As long as Santa Claus can keep that defended, that's they'll be fine. It, but yeah, prior to offerings. Yeatlander will, prior to Santa getting off, Yeatlander will definitely have the advantage in a fight just by numbers. Yeah. And, ooh, it's going to be close here. Okay, the teapot goes down immediately, and Yeatlander knows he won't have time, just heads back, doesn't want to deal with this. No, they're not going to, I mean, they might be able to take the fight by summoning Zol, but then they then they lose the ability to summon Zol for a while. Eh, yeah, just don't seem to want to go for that. Yeah, Yeatlander gets his base slightly faster than his opponent. Uh, Santa, I'm assuming, it's... is heading for offering. Uh, to no, get his I haven't seen his calls yet, so that's most likely. Yeah, kind of curious about Santa heading this way. He'll have to go for the tower to keep attacking. But of course, his opponent can't see anything happening unless Santa has a Santa strategy coming up. Just run around and hope the bonus stalkers are out of position, <laughs> which they are. Hope, hope Itlander is not looking at their own tower. And, and... Itlander needs to turn back. The strategy is, well, it's forcing Itlander back. Yeah, Santa we'll Claus be here offering snipe. Ooh. Itlander, they got a few seconds to get back. They will be able to engage before. Oh no! There's the cancel. Santa Oof. Claus getting the victory. Yes, Itlander might have been able to get on top of that, but he just wasn't in position. The teapot sees everything. Teapot oh. is perfectly placed oh, and Santa heads Santa. back. Santa just giving Itlander the runaround. Very well scouted. Mm. Perfect position on those teapots. That's something you just got all about Canyon. Those teapot positions. Usually people go through the canyon, go through the little edges here where you can't see the high ground. Those sea bots can find such value for themselves. It's it's an underrated thing when I mean, you first learn the game, but probably set up. Oh, though oh, no. here's why you do that. Santa Claus getting flanked. Yeah, huge arc from Itlander gets a few of those units, and Zol comes out now. Zol wants in on this action, gets a few mass hunters, and Santa needs to run. Careful of the edge of the mountain. And okay, he finds a way out. Can't head back yeah. to his own tower to heal up. Uh, but Elander got a few kills there. Yeah, Elander. They lost. They had their expansion delayed, but that that's quite the shift coming through. But not that was that was that was a solid catch by Elander. Yeah, that was an expensive catch though. You know, using Zol there, he didn't get that many kills. Now he might be able to get a counter kill, but no, Santa has enough units, even have the calls coming out to help defend. And at this point, Itlander knows that he can't get this base, but he hasn't expanded back. Ooh. And Santa knows they it. They haven't. They haven't. Santa knows it. Sa Itlander just wants to go for the kill. Five, five altars this early. Just yes. Yeah. Itlander wants blood. Oh yeah, he wants to kill his opponent. He. He, he doesn't want to play from behind. He's going for the big kill. But those I-Cores are fast. They're jumping on everything. Those Bone Stalkers are out of position. Oh, it lands. Enforcements are way off. Enforcements are coming, but they're coming in a line. And Santa will be ready for them. And that was perfect from Santa. Zakal's coming in, but there's not quite enough. Red Harvest comes in to get those Quiddles to help defend. And Itlander is routed with his all-in. 
Trying to find some way to salvage this. It does get rid of at least one of the Icor. Does get an opening now that Red Harvest is gone. Heatlander is 30 seconds away from getting another Zol Summon. Yeah, Zol Summon can make a big difference. Fight. But this is it enough. Could? Or it could, but it's so far away. It's just a great position for Santa getting that getting on the other side of that choke point. Even if Itlander comes tries to come in, Santa has the arc and Itlander needs to find another angle of attack. But he's still committing to this. He has all his units coming around the map. He's still on uh, five altars. <laughs> Santa Oh gets the resonant out. The resonant's a perfect unit to counter this type of attack. Yeah, Santa, this call will not have much of a chance here. Itlander does finally get their expansion going. So they will have maybe something behind this. It's just not their clear strategy. Clearly, the strategy is take out Santa's base. Just wipe it. Oh, he has the Going for the pincer. Okay, Itlander forcing a pincer attack here. Santa unable to deploy in any reasonable position. That's a call. That's a call. The resident getting kind of caught out. But Itlander unable to hold the line. Getting broken up by Santa. And now it's over. Santa taking game one. Off the back of a defense on a pincer attack. I mean, I really love that idea from Hitlander. Just go for the all in. You know, sometimes you're just a bit too far behind. Get a lot of units, kill your opponent's base, and get them back on equal footing. Didn't yeah. work out this time. Santa, with his teapot, scouting everything from the get go and just being ready for it. Yeah, that scout of the army movements. Like, uh, it was clever of Hitlander to realize well, this is where my opponent's going, so therefore I should catch them here on the other side of the map. I like that. But man, just Santa giving the runaround off of it. Oh, that, was, that was that was top marks. I loved it. Yeah, Inlander had a really some a few really nice moves catching his opponent out, but then he was all on it, thinking that Santa would fight, but Santa saw Zol ran away immediately. And that's mm -hmm. all was a bit wasted. A lot of pyro kind of wasted for only a few units. And uh, yeah, he he needed he needed Zol for the for the final fight at at, at Santa's natural and didn't have the pyro this time. No, they did not. So they didn't have the pyre and didn't have the army in position. Like just the timing was a little off. So the first first force got broken up and destroyed before the second force was able to actually come in. Well, I mean, pincers are kind of risky that way. Yeah, you, you got to try the pincers because you know, getting all that uh, all that attack and all those mm -hmm. all those missiles coming into your opponent. Uh, but this time, not quite. It's. Maybe Atlanta will have better luck this time. Won't lose his natural from the get-go. That can lead to a bit more of a normal game. Maybe. We'll find out. So, we have, this time, Itlander staying a Zol. Oh, no. Yeah, staying a Zol. Yep. While Santa heading for a zoom. Yeah, he, uh, he's changing up. Wants to put some towers down. And we'll see what Santa has planned this time around. He won't go for the early snipe with uh, the Mass Hunters. Impossible with uh, with War zoom. I say no, that. Not, so, not since they away. not since they fixed the pillar, not since they made the pillar push not a thing. Yeah, Santa would find a way. I believe in Santa. <laughs> You're not wrong. There's a lot of pyro on this map, but they're not going for that. They're going for the early expansion. Yeah. Okay. Playing the long early game. Yeah, early expansion first before Efer on Atlanta side. Efer before expansion. That seems to be a bit more of the Aru meta at this point. And Santa will be heading for Legion Hall right away. He wants to get his. His uh, his Antari out on the map. Get that just, first pirate just camp. in case. Yeah, get that first pirate camp early. Uh, Forces opponents to go for this and and have to go for the tower to get damage. A little block. Uh, Santa wouldn't have liked that last game. Gets a lot of damage on his mass hunters to go through. No, that was that was a lot that Santa had to deal with last game. Mm. Very early <laughs> on. Like just don't don't want to deal with that. You don't want to deal with any of that. At all. Uh, I do like it. Going double Ether. Hmm. Double okay, Ether I'm... expansion. Are they going for early Icor? I'm... Early Zakal Mass? It's a... Yeah, we'll see what comes up next. There's... It well... will, yeah, because thinking against Orzum, if they're going Mass Zentari, you wouldn't. You would want to have that. If you're going for early Dervish, then you won't have the Zakal to deal with that. Yeah, we'll see Neuroside or Amber Room. What or is early he getting? Air. For? Or just early Godheart. Yeah, Itlander, real, I mean, they know Orzum doesn't have a lot of stuff that shoots up early game. Go for air. They can't shoot up. Did Teapot see it? Did Teapot see that got hurt? I'd assume so. Is Santa I... left at this point? They might have. It's. It... I mean, if Santa knows, they'll 
probably build up Castigators to defend against. Or not Castigators at this point. They would build up... Zephyr's or something else? Is the game? Zephyr would be... Yeah, they're getting the Reliquary. I think they saw okay. it. Yeah, it's always, the, it's always the choice, right? Do you want to go for Reliquary? Santa wants to stay on those lower tech units. Doesn't want to tech up like we saw the Itlander do against Flicky. And just one of those responses. Oh, Neurosight. Okay, this is not what I expected. Neurosight with uh, double altar despite the Godheart. Well, I'm pr maybe Atlanta saw Santa saw it and said, oh, you know what? You think I'm going air? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit. Yeah, I'm going go to pick up my stuff. Yeah. going to go for Zakal, and then have an easier time dealing with the Zephyrs that you're likely to throw out. It's all about the mind there's... games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just... ever, since the last, ever since the last patch, Atlanta is going to have a much easier time dealing with Santa's like heavy secondary forces. Yeah. Like, Atlanta's Zakal are going to have an easier time dealing with Santa's Zephyrs than they would have in the past. Yeah, for so. sure. Oh, wait, is he... Is he gonna trap him? Uh no. Oh. Did not know that. I didn't think Atlander saw him go in there. That would have been a nice trap though. It, Get a free few minutes. It, really yeah, that that could have worked. That could have worked. It was good micro. It could have worked. Oh well, Santa wanting that tower in the middle of the map. Get as much vision as possible as early as he can. And Santa wants to defend that. He doesn't see there's a cause coming from the back. They don't. Oh Flash man. Coming in. Cancels it and oh. Oh, it literally didn't go for the flank. Dang, they could have got—they could have taken all of these Zentari for free. <laughs> and said Santa. Oh, Santa Claus, see, it's a little another day. Santa comes out alive. Still only four workers here. Set to eight, and same for Santa. Doesn't want to spend that three hundred E for uh, alloy so early in the game to get it up. They need their units to defend. That's a heavy push coming from. Uh, when there's no tower to defend, there is the hallow ground. The tower is not quite there. Uh, starts construction. Under. <laughs> Kills it right away from the get-go. And behind this, Santa needs to run. He doesn't have the time. But Zol comes out, and Atlanta wants to keep pushing. They want to keep baiting. Make sure like, They want Santa Claus to get out of the hallowed ground. Like, force them out, but it's not happening. And that gives Santa Claus a significant advantage. Able to wipe out most of Atlander's force. Atlander still going for it as Zol is up. But the trades are not working out in their favor. They're definitely not Zol. Even with the cost of Zolt, this fight went entirely in Santa's favor. The Magi healing up the units on top of it. <laughs> yeah, four Magi go? on top of all. Like, even the Zentari alone, but with the Magi healing, Santa Claus did not have anything to worry about. Yeah, and now Atlander heading back home. What does he have? He still has a lot of Zakals, but Zakals against this army, they're beefy, but not quite as beefy as Zentari with Magi healing them. <laughs> you can't beat Zentari with Magi healing them for beef. Yeah, uh, no, that they, is, yeah. That is yeah, the biggest they, cow in the game. Yeah, they've had their steak and they're made of steak as well. They're yep. try to cook him, try to cook him rare, but no, they're well done and ready to keep on going, being tough as we try to chew through them. I mean, their blood is plasma, so you would expect, yeah, any muscle mass would would be well done just by default. Yeah, yeah, you can't really go rare on that. Don't nope. be, yeah. Blood coming out? No, it's just plasma. Mm. No, it's all on fire. It's all, it's already fire. It's it's huh. everything's char grilled. <laughs> yeah, anything that tries to go in there will be charcoal as well. <laughs> yeah, see those across where you chomp on top of them? That won't work out this time. Oh no, he's Ooh. trying to he's trying to defend it and Oh but the I-Core's coming in. Oh this is perfect though. Inlander has the perfect composition to deal with this. Even yeah, with the match like, the match are gonna be taken out by the i as well, so Inlander's Inlander's getting the surround. Santa Claus does not have the force to deal with this. Everything they could has is out of position. And it wasn't much and, of it to begin with. Yeah, that Zol, and that was a good Zol summon. Zol really changing the fight there. Scepter coming from the back to deal damage on the other side. He heads back to the tower. Uh, Elander hold. Yep, Elander holds. Elander, good, good. No, no, hold, hold. You do not have the force to push this into the tower. Yeah. Well, behind this, Santa is happy. He got his tower up in the middle of the map at least, and his tower is up <laughs> at his at his natural. He has perfect defenses. There's not going to be anything that can really friend him at this phase of the game. Slender needs to figure out what he needs to do next, and he decides to expand. Expand the triangle position. That's a solid choice. Yeah, he's here to defend, except for Slender reinforcement from the tower here. <laughs> well, they can't like, like teleport to the tower or anything. Just they can use it as a staging position for stuff, but yeah. that scepter and a healing position too. Can they heal fast enough? That's gonna take a while. <laughs> yeah, like Slender. If they can hold, they can hold. They're fine. Yeah, he got on top of it. Scepter can just wait for reinforce to come up. See its health coming up. What is Atlander heading for next? Neurosight. 
I'm room. So he's not in for bone canopy at all. He's he's happy with a few no. I4s. And mostly... Now, Pierce, that was a that was a. Well, they'll, they'll may have it as an option, but it looks like that was a bit of a feint. He needs to be careful here not to be caught out. He, he can't keep pushing forward, so Santa gets him. Those units are forfeit. Oh. And Hitlander runs okay, away. Okay, doesn't get right trapped. Hitlander avoids oh. getting trapped. Got rid of the oh, Tower Foundation like... as well. It's a solid, solid costing your opponent Pyre for free. Yeah, no, that was a perfect that was a perfect play from him. That was entirely chasing those big chunky boys, but won't be enough. The, chunk, the, the resin chunks live on another day to uh, defend against those, um, those fire swords. <laughs> Okay, well, moment of truth of the Fire Swords. Hitlander once again going to the flank. Santa spotting it. Santa going around the back, but get that opens the tower up for Hitlander to take out. The real goal here, wiping out that forward position that Santa Claus has set up, forcing Santa back a little bit. Hitlander uh, not losing too much in the process either. Well, it's an expensive trade, you know? Four is a cause and two I-Cores. Those aren't exactly free, but... You close in positions. Oh, and even get the second. No, here. this is yeah. This is yeah, at this point. Yeah, that is the strategic goal here: is to keep map control from getting in Santa's favor. Like, you let oh. us much easier time expanding now. That's the, that is going to be so much easier going into the mid game. It needs to be careful not to overcommit here. Those those howlers at the back. Oh, they don't, so no, they don't, have, they don't have anything to work with this. They don't have any options. Eatlander, you got to get out. Quit while you're ahead. Oh my oh, god! No. They want that scepter bad. They want that scepter so bad. And they get it, but at the cost of their entire army. Yeah, that scepter was not worth it. Zoe's still here. Zoe can fight. You can. You don't have to worry about losing Zoe. Oh man. I was going for so well for Atlanta, but look at the army value: four thousand to one thousand. Is Santa just ready to push a few units here that uh, can try well, that's to? That's where the Icor went off to. Yeah, exactly. They just kept going forward. They're like, oh, I want to go explore the mountains a bit. Feels like home. Uh, but not quite the third base. It's going to be a very hard defense, of course. Itlander's army is getting close. Much closer reinforcements. So those howlers is the main problem. Unfortunately, lack of air. Itlander has no way of countering the howlers without taking significant losses, and they cannot afford to take losses. Getting on top of those howlers is impossible with so much beef of Centauri in, in front. And Santa on his free basis is very happy. Itlander takes, has, has taken the third on the other side at least, so he's equal in economy, but his army is just not up to par. That oh. army. That's some terrifying horse right there. Okay, Dress. interesting choice here. Setting it for the slow. Unfortunately, the Hallowers pretty well directly counter this. Yeah. They, they use the Underspines. So, Itlander's army... That army composition shift is not going to do them a whole lot of good. Now, shifting the Spellcasters, that... There's a bit more promise there. We see in the top left of the Red Seers. Yeah. Well, what Santa's that, never that? done. Oh, this nope. is the origins of Santa. The origin of Santa, the gift that keeps on giving the dervish, the dervish. coming in to come and yeah. bone salt away for the enemy. I think is Santa forgiven the dervish? Is Santa is Santa back in good terms with them? Oh, definitely. He he is, and he even keeps them alive while the fight is happening in the middle. But those howlers on the high ground, you can't even attack them. You can't see them. He's trying to push forward, but it ladder, it's got to be careful. You kill Fuse and Tari, but at the cost of what? The cost of your whole army. Oh, and especially this, do not lose the Red Sears. Those are, you do not have the bases. You, like, Itlander does not have the economy, ether economy, to reinforce Red Sears. Like, they did just not die. Yeah. Oh, no. The unit's coming back at the worst possible time, and the Dervish jump on top of them and ready to flank back. Those howlers yeah, are so Santa's, well placed. <laughs> Santa is getting every position going. Itlander finally getting some some kind of benefit off of both the uh, both of their entire composition actually, oh, yeah. like Great the underspine plagues. slow and the red seer plague. As yeah, entire really, well, there's not much energy left on those matter. Let's put it this way: they had to heal no, up all their dead weight. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a, they were got, they got sick. They got real sick. Yeah, coughing blood uh, for your pores is not the way to go. Well, I mean, you got to go somehow, I guess. Yeah, and if you're gonna go somehow, just. Give Pop it to like three or four. Yeah. Give yeah. all your blood to Lagulafon, and that's how it goes. Give blood. Give all of your blood. Whether you want to or not. Well, you give all your blood, but you still have a bit of body left. And at least Centauri or Plasma, as you said. So even giving all their blood, they have some plasma left. <laughs> not that was... kind of plasma. <laughs> mm. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Atlanta heading on out. Tries to find an attack, but. 
Ooh, nice blood plague again. Oh, on everything. the Hallowers too. Unfortunately, the Fallout Force is going to be struggling this entire, as you mentioned before, that beef. That beef heading on top, but the tower helps defend a Magi are here. And he's jumping out of everything. Inlander needs to win this fight. He needs a win now. He's been losing for a while. Jumps up by everything. But the army, the army is just too powerful for Santa. He's heading forward with his uh, his Hallowers running back. Oh, Inlander going for the back lines. They don't have a lot of force to deal with the Hallowers. They're desperately trying to take them out. But that Rook of Ira, that, that tower, the Santa's expenditure of pyre was absolutely worth it. Yeah, Santa wanted that tower from the start. And he kept it. Since he had this position, he's been great at just holding it. But reinforcements come faster for Itlander. But is it enough reinforcements to jump on top of these units? Santa's reinforcement coming slowly. Santa can't buff up the tower again. Itlander has a solid opening here. Hallowers trying to find the position, but no, they can't. Santa going to retreat them. Itlander just hunting. Itlander artillery hunting. Able to get half them down. Granted, this is the cost of their whole army. It's... Uh, not really enough. I need to take them all out in order to actually have this. You know what? Illander's been used to giving away his army so far this game, unfortunately. That's a problem. Yeah, they, they've been yeah. gotten very accustomed. I think they're. Are they going for an expand? Uh, hit, hit in the fourth? There's something over in the fourth base. Ah, just got it out. They they know uh, Santa's ahead. They haven't gone to do anything about it. They really can't afford to, honestly. Even this. Even the, the attempts they're having now are not. They're working out okay, but Santa is so far ahead in the economy, Itlander needs to be winning cons winning decisively every time. And Santa's yeah. going to be fighting that economy as well with the throne going in the back lines of Itlander's main. And heading for that early Ancient. Itlander wants to contest it. Maybe he can get a few kills instead of going for the Ancient. That can always work. And the swords come down on those from those thrones. Zoe comes out and he really wants to get Itlander, this fight down. This, this is it. This is the last time Itlander has to push this. The main base is being wrecked. Their Zal is their only real hope. They've lost all their frontline beef. And with the Sharu coming in here, this could be over. Ostrike comes down, wipes out most of the Bone Stalkers. Needlander cannot challenge Santa Claus. They're gonna get the. They're gonna get all that pyre. They uh, set up. They part. could actually start get up. Get a pillar push to try to finish this off. Their issue is just that at the back of... Oh, the Throne even got the kill there. He roots down the units, but the swords come down on all the units trying to kill it. Oh, man. That Throne getting out alive. Oh, yeah. Santa can keep pushing while harassing with his Throne on the back line. And they're giving it all to just survive at this point. Uh, the third base doesn't oh. have many units defending. They're no, coming. it does not. It really doesn't. The reinforcements are in. Sin is already well set up. Like... Triple army value, double supply. This is Itlander's desperate last stand. Blood plagues are doing a reasonable job, but those Hallowers from Santa Claus are they're they're ace in the hole. They have been this entire game. Yeah, Santa, Santa going for a very strong ground ground army. We've seen that before. His entire Magi Hallower, perfect beef with the with the artillery at the back. Itlander hasn't found a solution. Often what we've seen is going for those behemoths, uh, but he just hasn't had time to take up to that position, especially with that throne. Attacking his base, his main base, almost no more mining left. Santa checks the bottom yep. to see if there's a base here. And he'll see it just as it finishes. Oh, Pillar comes down to end the game. And that is... Yeah, there's that Pillar push I was talking about. Santa... <laughs> they, they might as well. They have all that fire. Just yeah. throw it in. Get that extra position to work from. Yeah, the final pillar coming in a bit later than you didn't, uh, that we would anticipate. But it's going to be enough as Itlander tries to re get his reinforcements to come in for whatever he can. Get the last few kills. Gets a Sharu, which is an expensive unit. But at this point, it's too little, too no, late. No, it's like it Itlander has nothing left. Santa pushes in and takes the win. A nice 2-0 oh. Santa. Yeah. We're gonna be... We are into the winner's finals now. Or we might be. Uh, it's Magical and Wajizo are going at it. They've been going out for a little while. I uh, will have to double check what the timing is on that. We might actually be holding a game two on that one. Yeah, perhaps. The last game started 20 oh, minutes semifinals. ago. semifinals. Did I say for quarterfinals? This is semifinals. It's been semifinals for a while. Yep. Ah. Oh, well. And on the other side, yeah, as you said, uh, Magical and Zoo started their game about uh, 17 minutes ago. 
they'll keep on going. Not sure if they're on uh, on the first or not the first game. I think they're on the first game. We haven't seen a GG come out from either of them. Okay. All right, so, cool. So we could catch that at some point. Yeah. All right, I'm going to... Andre, are you... Oh, no, kitties. Kid is getting in trouble. Kid is like, causing trouble. trouble. Not trouble. He's just He just wants attention, that's all. Oh, yeah, that's not trouble. Wanting attention is not trouble. <laughs> all right, I'm on camera still. <laughs> Should be <laughs> troublesome. Could have brought Andre on camera. Nobody minds. I can't. I, he doesn't not, want I, to. He doesn't want to be... He's, he wants to go and something outside of the office so i can't uh, like just I, I would oh you do want you do want up yeah you want up okay oh, uh, yeah i would yeah. have thought andre's not camera is. shy that's good oh hey andre nice to see yeah. you we've seen you a few times we have he, he comes from time to time he does it's just hard to get him on camera because i'm not very high on the camera so mm. on my lap you will not be able to see him Oh well. Andre, well we saw him for Thanks. a bit. Yeah. So we can get on to the next game as soon as probably Watch Zone Magical are done their first. I'm going to assume. That's probably what's here. Happening. Yeah, and yeah. we're during that time the lower bracket. We saw pretty much results kind of expected. Flicky taking out Lake Deer, uh 1 0, and Voyer taking out mm -hmm. Entropy. 1-0 as well, so we're making it to the lower bracket quarterfinal. Oh, that's true, yeah. We have our seventh places. Man, Elon or not a voyeur, that is a pretty... It could be a fun game, I'll say. Match. Okay. Yeah, they just started, unfortunately, so we just missed that one. Uh, okay. Could have been, been a fun one, as you said. Anytime yeah, more. I... Okay, well, I'm going to do with Andre, so just give me a sec. Yeah, sure. Actually, I'm going to throw it a break, because we're going to wait for... Oh, no! Why oh, does magical are done? We can actually get on to this, and we're not going to go to a break. Perfect. Magical versus YJ Zhao. Zhao yep. having improved a lot as he keeps playing. He, he's been our more consistent playtester in the last few weeks, so he just keeps improving every single time. He has a bit less of a strategy game background, so he's really learning a lot through Immortal. That's just it, right? When you're beginning, you just have so much more to learn, and he's just getting better and better just by playing because uh, he doesn't have all those uh, old, old, old. Uh, old mechanics to come by with him. Yeah, it's a it's a mixed bag. They don't have the old mechanics. They don't have the the, the old ideas. They're very they're very open to learning though. Like they've yep. been asking many many questions. Exactly. Right now, just figuring out the basics. And yes, some of the issues that we see a lot of players coming in. If you if you've seen some other games, sometimes the issues are mechanical. And the more what more comes down to the choices that you make. That mm -hmm. do you win this fight? Do you still want to engage, or should you just run back? And that's been a bit of Zao's issues in the last few weeks is just figuring out, okay, which fight should I take? This Is this a winning fight? Is this a losing fight? Should I run? Should I try and fight it? I need to defend this position or do I just abandon my third base and try and reinforce? It's, it's the decision Stuff you gotta like make. Yeah. yeah. They were having issues with suicide in their army as well quite a bit, which yep. was a consistent problem. So, yeah. No, it's just not a problem we see quite a bit because, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a hard choice to make. I have a big army. I just want to fight. But like, no, you shouldn't be fighting. Fighting is not always good. It's a game about fighting, but sometimes fighting is the losing choice. All right. Oh, so I'm guessing Magical. Okay, so Magical would have won the first game. That's yeah, my yeah. guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Zou 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 picked. Zou Zou got Zou the Zou map, picked. so that makes sense. Yep. All right. We're going to be seeing a lot of Canyon today from the looks of it. <laughs> yeah, people have been enjoying it a lot. I'm it's a good map. It's a very nice. I mean, I like Frontiers a lot as well, to be fair, but I guess Canyon, uh, you, you have a few shenanigans with the Canyon in the middle and having those paths and oof. Zoop hyping us up saying the pass game was probably the best he's ever played. So he's ready to take on that. Right. He, he's seeing it. He's seeing the fire in his eyes. He's ready to keep pushing and taking the damage to Magical. All right, well, we'll hold it to it. Oh, yeah. See what immortals they pick as well as. Uh, well, Magic, both of them play a lot of different Immortals. Zoo lately has been playing a lot of Zoe. He used to play a lot mm -hmm. of Orzum, but now lately has been more Zoe. And this time around, what did he pick? It is Zoe. <laughs> it is Zoe mm -hmm. and Magical heading for Mala. Senator Mala, we saw that earlier as with Santa with uh, Santa Claus versus uh, uh, Santa Claus versus Atlander earlier. Santa came for a bit of a kooky strategy. Not sure if it's going to work out again. As uh, they, they both tried their best they had for it. 
Zoo opening up with an Aether first. And that's oh, magical. Going. Okay, magical going for a bit of a fast expansion. Yep, heading for a fast expansion with the first Aether. Zoo doing the exact same strategy. So so far nothing unusual from either player. Heading for the same thing. No double uh, no double altar like we saw with Santa or Zitlander. Uh, so just traditional stuff. Yeah, it's a it's a slow start. Low and fun. It works. Slow and steady wins the race. Sometimes, unless you get Sometimes. hit in the face, and then uh, you just don't even get to do the race because you're dead. I, you can survive getting hit in the face. Depends by what. If it's a if it's That's a car, fair. if it's a That's car. That's a good point. If it's a car, you can. If the car is going like a, five kilometers yeah, per hour, it's like how fast is the car going? You know, it's a lot of little questions like this. You can't just. And then, what is the car thing. made of? Is it the car made of cardboard? Is the car made of metal? Or is the car made of plasma? If it's plasma, uh, it touches you. Die even if it's going at five That's kilometers true. per hour. It doesn't have to touch you, actually. Yeah, just being far away, the radiation might just be enough to take you in. Well, the heat, yeah. Yeah, heat radiation. Wait, does plasma have radiation? It does right? If, no, not necessarily. <laughs> Well, okay, plasma. does Centauri plasma? Centauri plasma. I mean, that's a good plasma. question. Depends on what the element that's gone into plasma state is. Yeah, I would assume so, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's able to contain within himself <laughs> and send it. Or maybe he just sends it out as a ray of light with his sword. Maybe that's how that works. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I I mean, I don't think so, because it's, it's pulling from the hallowed ground, I think. Because he can't do it normally. Ah, right. So it's not from their own blood. Not boring. We need more well, things built from your own blood. We only have the. We have an entire hours. faction built around things from your own blood. Yeah, but the blood is not plasma. So it's not quite as cool, you know. It's a it's a mixed bag here. Uh, okay. It's blood, but it's not cool blood. Exactly. I, I want cool blood for everyone. And okay, both both of them going for the pirate camp, and neither trying to contest the other one. Not really worth it. And wait, no. <laughs> yeah, the T okay, I was about to say, can T bus no longer grab that? <laughs> Why would they need to do that? They're fine. All right, let's see. Double altar with the neuroscite yeah. for Magico. So uh, early offering. Yep, early offering, which is pretty much a standard. While well, Zakal is coming out for Zoo pretty early. No, yeah, oh, Godhard coming out as well. Well, there were there was some discussion early this morning about Zakal as not being that useful generally for Mala because of Kittle. Ah, they, right. Basically, magical magical thing, and they don't need to go for Zakal because they can just use Kittle to micro or use Kittle as a blocker. Yeah. The true frontliner you always needed. Yeah. Whereas though you do need that frontliner. You do. That bloody frontliner with resin in the back. You do, because your only other option is well, basically, Zol him Zol herself, and she's not really a blocker. No, nope. we say that, but Magico still going, still heading for a few of calls of his own. Okay, yeah, couple. You always, always gonna, we're not going to see. We're going to see far more from Zo. Which we do, because, yeah. Because yeah, they're they they need them a bit more. And they're both just posturing on the map, figuring out, probably trying to take out the teapots of their opponents. Don't want them to scout everything. Doing. Ooh, and Magical gets a small catch. We get a, one of those units, the Resonant. The Reson uh, the, sorry, the Zakal at the back. At the back, getting taken out. An expensive loss for Zoop, but it's not game ending at all. He's running back to the tower, and once he reaches the tower, Magical, he won't keep pursuing, will he? Okay. No, no, they're, they know. They know well enough. Yeah, you don't pursue on top of the tower, and Zoo. Yeah, Zoo, don't follow back that army that was chasing you away for a reason. Yep. Ooh, four altars, ready to make a lot of units. Ooh, Magical, okay. St still on free. And Magical, very much focused on getting that big, that big army. I mean, the thing is, it's it's a micro thing. Yep. Like Magical's Magical's army is way more, way stronger when microed properly. Watch as Zoe's army has a bit less potential for micro, but is way more stable if they're not quite getting it as well. Yeah, so it's it's a metal car. Yeah. It's a bit of a metal car. You can exactly, just yeah. You just drive it. it. Yeah, drive it through, and if you just hit the right stuff, you'll get them. If you don't, yeah. well... Some dents, some dings, but, well, you know, you can still hit them. Yeah, Magico's more of a scooter with a knife, I guess. If it, yeah. you can, if you use it well, you'll be able to do some nice things. Uh, but if Might not, the cars are going to pick yeah, you, you know, up. Yeah, it's yeah. like you go through, and you just... You really carefully go between the cars, slashing their tires. And yeah, they can't exactly. drive anymore. Yeah, exactly. So you got you got to be super careful. Ooh. But Magical Magical knows how to slash tires. Oh, and he's slashing the tires strong right now, getting out the extra the extra flame for with it. If Mala comes out, but Zo comes out as a counter, and Magical forced to forced to run back home to his own tower. 
Well, oh. A little bit of blood for them, and... No, a little they're... bit of uh, an advantage position for Wajazel, getting the high ground here. Oh, but and it's a nice on all sides. The offering comes in. Zal is gone. Now Zo is surrounded. He doesn't really have the army to deal with this. Another red harvest comes through, and Zo this time has nothing to hold this. Forced back, but trapped. Trying to go from the surround themselves, however. Are they going to pull this back? Oh, they are. They do get a lot of damage back here, but it's a Pyrrhic victory for or for Zhao with Magical. This maintains the army advantage and pushes Zhao out from taking an expansion. As you mentioned, having having those Quiddles come out just costs so much frontlining that uh, Metro comes out ahead in these fights. He uses Pyro. Zhu has more for a next fight, but Pyro without an army is not quite worth it. Magical even gets a, tea, a flying teapot out to, as a detector to see if any invisible units are coming for his opponent. That might not be, not mm -hmm. be what Zeus going for. Not so far. It, it, was, I mean, it, was, a, it was a good timing from Zeus. Yeah, it they just wanted the expansion. Hard. They was like, no, we can take the expansion out. It's like, no, your opponent's right there. They have plenty of pyre. They can just... And then get the surround on you, more importantly. Yeah, they're mostly at the arc coming in. Well, he came in through the choke point. When you come in through the choke point, it's a bit hard. And Magical mm -hmm. hitting for blood bounds? Oh. A big Upgraded blood bounds. blood bounds of that. I've seen Magico start doing that a bit lately. With the upgrade, they can survive so many more hits, so they can really assassinate and jump out of battle. Let's see how Magico makes it work out here. Oh, there's not that many units here as well. He can really no, jump on top the of them. They go around the back, and then... Well, oh. actually... Oh, that's why he got the flying detector. Oh, he's going for because the Because Bloodbound can jump. Whew. Hey! We haven't seen this in a long time. Oh, yeah, that was one of the original things people did with Bloodbound. <laughs> Yeah, it was considered a cheese strat, but you just... I mean, it's what Bloodbounds do. They're assassin units. Of course they're going to be doing... They're assassin jumper units. The, the balancing factor is they don't get to jump very often. Yeah, the, the curiosity right now is magical. He... Yeah, he wants to distract his opponent during the whole time. He has a small army no, now. He knows it, and he wants his opponent to actually jump on top of him, follow him home. While the Bloodbounds go into the main base... Uh, unfortunately, some of them miss, miss their oh. teleport but still get some units in the back of it. Magical running away, heading for a third base to defend. Uh, or maybe those it was intentional. Off. Goes with the expansion. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. Uh, yeah, it gets a lot of kills here, and Zoo needs to needs to head back home, but that's not enough bone stalkers to deal with that many no, blood that's bounce. not going to help. No, they're upgraded now. Unupgraded uh, maybe, but no. Uh, he's coming in, but the red harvest comes out immediately for Magical, and Zoo's going to lose so many units as the Quiddos come out from all the ones that die. And he's doing his best, but that army is just a little too small to do the damage. They're too to small off the wrong sides. Magical oh, has the, the surround flag. on them, and why does though their counterattack gets wiped as their main base is getting slowly but surely torn to pieces. That being said, Zo has managed to defend with the with the symbiotes. Mostly, there's still mostly a, yeah. The natural yeah, there's one one bloodbound left, and on the other side they're still free. And Zoo wants to find a way back into his own base to defend as he lost his production structures, and that means he can't make that many units. One more goes down. Yeah. And does Magical that much more? Does Magical have uh, the ability to actually run out? I mean, he doesn't, but he doesn't need to. At they this don't. They're not worried about. It. No, they got the push. Magical going in for the kill. They gets set the it up. Now they're looking to knock it down. Magical gets in the high ground before Zo gets back. Natural expansion. Is going to go down, though. If they can hold the natural, they can hold the choke point. Maybe Zal coming in, last ditch effort from Zo. This may be enough of a defense. Yeah, the line AOE is pretty strong, but just strong enough to push his opponent back. But Magical was waiting for his reinforce. As the reinforce come in, he'll go in again. Uh, but he doesn't even even need to. His opponent is stuck on no, two the, production the, like, structures. Zo. Yeah, what's this going to be taking about five minutes to rebuild all the production structures and get themselves like just to get enough population, like population capacity to match magical? They're oh, going to spend several minutes building that back up. And while they he's lost building a ton that, of their economy as well. Yeah, when he's building buildings, he can't be mining, so <laughs> that's another. Yeah, and uh, they and they lost almost all of their symbiotes in the process. Huh? So why does that has no economy? They have no production. Magical has just free reign. They could get the next two ancients and not have to worry about anything. Yeah, but that's not usually magical stuff. Magical likes no. They're gonna go for the kill. He doesn't play with his food quite as much as other people. <laughs> it's like, yeah, they're not Santa. They, they have oh. mercy. 
Yeah, Seta just likes to bring his dervish in from time to time, give a little gif of cut arms, and then run I mean, back out yeah. and keep playing with his food. Yeah, I mean, last week, I actually, well, like, kind of, like, screaming at San... Well, screaming, but, you know, like, commentator screaming at San, like, stop playing with your food and just get the win already. That are ready to keep doing... Oh, Magic was kind of doing that. He... He doesn't, know how many production, he doesn't know how many production structures he killed, so he thinks, oh, he can rebuild his army. I'm just going to tech up this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, be careful. I mean, get yeah, getting mass behemoths. Yep. That's how he wants to end it. He wants to make sure he doesn't lose by overcommitting to a bad fight. And yeah, the safe way to win the game, while at the same time being able to get all those power camps, get at 300 power, because you never have enough. Oh, okay, yeah, that's just Rain of Blood followed by another Rain of... Well, Rain of Blood plus Red Harvest together. Yeah. That, they can yeah. totally do that. A rain of blood that never ends for hours on end. I think the cooldown's too long. I thought it was equal. I thought the cooldown was equal to uh, to its length. 30 seconds, 30 seconds or something. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, is it? I think it was. I, okay, because I'm trying to remember, because I know they, they increased the cooldowns to the ultimates quite a bit no, recently. Okay. So Maybe. I... You might be right. I might Actually, be the, cool, the, the cooldowns for things are not standardized. That's just yeah. part of how it works. Like it's, it's intentionally not standardized. So Mala could be like that. Oh, Icor's running around the map. I just, I'm, I'm still admiring that animation here. They're still working on it. Could they finish it up? But I just love the little jump. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I'm expecting it'll be like a little bit more and then put IK on it so it interacts with the terrain a little better. And there we go. Yeah. Actually, I'm assuming. I don't know if Inverse Kinematics has even been implemented for anything. It looks mm. kind of like it has, but I haven't actually looked. Oh, man. I get the covering in to see, uh, see everything coming in eventually. Well, that, now they're just wagging their tails. That's look weird. Oh, yeah. That ass by the throat look really weird. It's like a chicken. Or a turkey. Here comes the behemoth. Turkey dogs. That's what the icors are. Well, Azu is also known as an opponent that will never give up until until everything is dead. And uh, he still has two bases. He lost most of the but he he believes him in his chances. Yeah. Uh, maybe a bit too much with, with four it's behemoths bit... coming out. Okay, this is why Mal or this is why Magic went for the behemoths though, because trying to go directly in against the resonance would not be quite so successful. Having the behemoths there will break the resonant line, no problem. Like, Wajizel's well, defenses just will not hold. But oh, that's God. because of the added the added behemoths. Yeah. Well, they're going to be here, and Magico is getting ready to push in. He's splitting his army, uh, for his opponent to maybe follow those behemoths to the high to to the north. It's something they definitely should not do. And Magico is pushing in with everything. He's ready for his push. The two residents are coming in. Rain of blood comes in for the kill. Red harvest, as you mentioned before, everything is ready to spawn those quiddles, get that energy and that regen. And, uh, just doing his best. Yeah, Magical is... They're pushing in. Kill after kill. Taking out Watches Out's base. Watches Out desperately trying to defend, but unable to hold. And Magical takes it 2-0. Move on to the winner's finals. Oh, man. Winner's finals against Santa. A match for the ages that we've seen a few times. And we're never tired of seeing it. Because they're both original players that... <laughs> Yeah, okay, fine. Last time the 1v1 was not that great. You're right. No, I'm not like... that. Sorry, everyone's just putting Morbin time memes in the chat, and it's it's getting to me. Ah, uh, exultant time. Well, because Flicky actually managed to make it work with... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part from Immortal Gates of Pyre was when Zol showed up and said, It's Zol in time, and proceeded to Zol all over the place. Yeah. Gotta believe in Zol. <laughs> it's Zol in time. It's Zol in time. Zolan ready to Zomolo, Zolo line. Um, was, oh, Santa's already in lobby. Great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Santa. I don't think they ever left. I don't know. They, oh. did, they did leave. Yeah, it's we even left lobby. lobby. <laughs> yes, we that's even. true. That's, that's what happened. Okay. Did someone win the raffle? I can't remember. Oh, no one did. People always everyone watching raffles. already has a key. Well, that doesn't matter. They always want more keys to uh, hoard, or, hoard them. No, I think yeah. they'd be nice. Okay. See, I want the last key. I, I want a key the other day, but I was promised a Walter NFT. I didn't get it. I'm still at this point about it. I'm still uh, poking uh, the dev team until I get my Walter NFT. Uh, I think you'll be waiting a while. It's okay. He said uh, he'll make it very secure which, uh, with an envelope that says, please do not open. It's uh, the best way oh. to secure stuff, I think. 
NFTs don't come in envelopes, that guy. What? No. Oh. It, I mean, it's not a new fountain. It's not a new fountain tower. That's not what an NFT is. I want my tower in an envelope. I. I want. I a have Walter. so much bad news for you. <laughs> really? I have so so much bad news for you. It's. I can't get a Walter new fountain tower. I mean, you might be able to, but no one calls it that. You're gonna have no to. Okay, let me guess. It's not actually the end. Doesn't sound for news for Nova. Mm. Nova Fountain Tower. Uh, no, still not. We'll have to talk about this off stream. Okay. I don't really okay. want to break it to you on stream. I don't think the chat wants to see the reaction. You don't think I'll? You don't think I'll be able to take it? No. Okay. No. Well, I, I guess we'll. I'll guess I'll just have to be happy with the finals with uh, the Walter team itself. Uh, the winners of our two v two big tournament, uh, doing their best as the one v one to gain advantage between each other. That's the idea. What immortals will they go for? Which uh, which immortal most represents Walter? Mm, I don't know. Who does who does Santa want to play today? Yeah, have to ask. Uh, we have to ask Walter. Uh, Walter's Walter's. I feel like Zolda's because well, it's kind of hard to say because sorry, I want to say Orzma's because blue, but Zolda's because Nuoth. Yeah, exactly. Anything with Nuoth has to be better. Mm. We'll have to ask Santa Walter about Walter is a non-canonical Nuoth creature. Oh, Santa's going for blue. Okay. Non-canonical yet. No, it's might be an Easter egg, but I they're Ooh, not. <laughs> that that's it. Yeah, yeah. Easter egg just had to go over Dylan's head and somehow a dev's gonna put it in. It's like, oh no, it gotta get removed. It's just gonna be floating somewhere. Yep. As a or maybe we'll, or maybe we'll have a stake and it'll be a Walter stake and I'll say, oh yeah, <laughs> a, a stake of un, is that unknown be, origins. That's that's gonna be their merch. Oh, just blue God. like <laughs> steaks that are tinted bl with blue food coloring. It's the Walter steak. Hmm, delicious. Yeah. Oh, in either case, we have Magico playing as Mala again in the north northwest, and Santa playing as Orzu. You know, I'm really happy. I'm seeing a lot more Mala. I love Mala's abilities, like the Red Harvest. Really feels like so powerful to be able to just take advantage of it. Is his use of Blood Bounds as well? If, if Santa, I don't know if Santa saw it, he might have seen it before. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Yeah, that was. Oh, that would be so cool. I mean, like, it's worth noting. Magical was the cheeser before Santa became the cheeser. Yeah, that's like, how you start Santa fighting. learned from Magical. Yeah. But it would be funny to see in the teacher, like, sh one up the student there. Yeah. Oh, they come out with their own cheese and then just abuse it for a while because that's how you win tournaments yeah. sometimes. <laughs> if something's overpowered. And in the state of in the I don't think they're the overpowered, game. though. I don't think they're overpowered. Like, that, that was quite a bit of setup that, you know, it, if you don't throw yourself into the Red Harvest. Yeah. And you keep an fine. eye on, oh, they've read Harvest, blood, upgraded Bloodbound are an option on the table. Like, a few stack defenses would probably slow it down enough that you could then bring in an army to defend. Really, it was mm. it was the timing of White Shizzo pushing out while the Bloodbounds came in. Like, Magical, Magical had to work for that one. I, I'm not going to call that overtuned. Oh, no, no. It's definitely not overtuned. Like, nothing's really overtuned right now. It's just... You gotta be right Zol's, Zol's building damage. Zol's building damage is overtuned. Fine. But that's Maybe getting fixed. Exactly. Everything's going to get a little bit fixed and deal with it. And here... Oh, okay, I was wondering if Magical hit the teapot, but not quite enough. You can still see it. And Santa's going to kill that teapot. He he loves teapot, but not quite as much as smash teapots. Well, also just attack moving. It's going to... Oh, no, they're not going... What? Really? Oh, I thought they would attack moving into the teapot, but nope. Okay, no, Santa's... He has to see it, right? He's not going to let that happen. No. Oh no. I, oh well. Sorry, Santa. Oh, the second Imagine people was a backup here. just in case to steal it. Yeah. Okay. There okay. There. The, okay. That. There it is. Oh, but he's getting reinforced. Nah, the mass murders are a bit too slow. Oh, that by time. Nah. Hey, Santa got the pot. Okay. It's smaller oh. Liam exchange, but whatever. Oh, wait, Santa wait, wait. got the pot here. Okay. I was wondering if that last Antari, if Magico wants it but doesn't get it, and Centauri run back. Phew. Okay, no units died here. No units nope. died in this early fight. No, nope, that was just just teapots. And we gotta say, like, for these two players, losing unit is a pretty big deal, as their build Should... orders are pretty well defined. That losing units, like, oh, I'm gonna, yeah, all my builds gonna be uh, slowed down by 100 e alloy for everything, and that's a scary proposition. Although losing the scouts, that's not nothing. Like, that's not free. Yeah. Uh, and Santa brings his scout in. Saw 
possibly the Godhard being built. So that that's a bit of a clue. It's like, okay, he's building Godhard. I need to get some anti-air in case he goes for the Bone Canopy. Yep. But that's about it. He has a tower and he has the Bastion on both bases to really help defend everything. Uh, Santa's playing a defensive game here with his with his early pyre. Oh, are they? Are they? Because they they look like they're trying to go for the same strategy as last time. Set up the towers forward later on. I get the oh, pyre yeah. to set up the forward towers. Yeah, that makes sense. Keep stuff defensive at back so you don't have to worry about it. You know, blood bounce come in. They'll have to deal with the towers. So they can't really do too much damage like they did last time. And besides that, Santa heading for Murphy Spider Cam gets it and might get intercepted. Magico. Magico's in position to intercept it if he wants to. Well, if he sees it. Which the teapot just might. Ooh. Ooh, Magico's going to be happy on this catch. Santa yep. will not, though. Oh. Okay, trying to run back and gets one. Yeah, I get surrounded. Magi are in. Santa has a bit of a chance to get through here, but Magical. Needs ah, there's a surround. Magical needs to micro. That's their only hope here. Reinforcements for Magical. Able to push back, but Santa wants to get to the tower. They'll be fine. Okay. Lost two Centauri on that exchange, but killed probably around four mass hunters. It's a, it's a decent exchange on both sides. Magical caught Santa out of position. Santa got the power he wanted, and with that power, some. He's, yeah. He's able to Some rebuild. Yeah, he they didn't get the forward position, though. They like Getting those forward towers is just not in the cards. Not okay. for now, anyway. Yeah, exactly. He, he wants to get this tower. He wants to get this tower. He'll get it eventually. Yeah. In the meantime, Magical thing is third base. Magical can be pretty confident at this point. That's the thing. They, they don't... Like, they can expand. They know they can expand. They don't have no. to fear getting hit by a fire, like forward fire base. And heading for the for the early frums and two bone canopies to really pump out those frums. So he's heading for at least nine frums from the get go, and from there he'll be able to keep map control. As Santa will be stuck defending until he can deal with those frums. Besides that, Magical can expand freely, which is a big advantage as the third base comes down. But M M Santa's out of position. Out of position and denied the forward expansion or forward tower once again. Like they're moving out for that. You can tell like they're moving out trying to secure forward positions. It's like. Magical knows. Right. Can't let it happen. Yeah, but he, he doesn't see the firms at all, and Magical has, an, has nope. enough Aether. He, he's been saving up his Aether to get as many firms as he can. Six are out right now. How many does he want to get to? As many as they can. Because nothing shoot. Well, the Magi shoot up, but that's... Yeah. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. that's not relevant. Yeah, that's not Magi's role. Oh, okay, nope. here's the four tower. He's ready to keep pushing forward. Of course, Magical knew not to take the triangle base. Uh, Santa checks it out, sees it's not there, and I don't assume his opponent is uh, getting a lot of different units, which he is. They are. And but more Santa, importantly, Santa was delayed. Very heavily like, delayed by a couple minutes for this. Uh, well, Santa has no anti air here. He's getting Halwars for his big push. But the Frums are in and dishing the damage. Match, he's attacking at the front at the same time, though. He's trying to push some damage, but won't be able to do quite Match as got much. This. Yep. Oh, Halwars are out, but uh, the big rays of light. They don't shoot up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they should, right? Oddly, the big ray of light comes from the sky and not enough, though. Yeah, you think doesn't, so. Doesn't get quite yeah, high enough. Of that, huh? I guess. I guess the I guess thrums fly above the sky. As do all air units. Maybe yeah. it's just like a rain cloud appearing above their head that drops a lightning on them. Who knows? Who knows how it actually works? Or it's the opposite. It comes from the ground up. Doesn't look like oh, that, though. Oh, maybe. Yeah, it but lightning be. doesn't either. And yet it does. Okay, I don't know. Things That's never appear as they are. Yeah. Okay, here comes the fight. Santa believes in this fight, but the offering comes in, and the red harvest comes oh, in. Oh, that was so lighting. perfect. That was so perfect, though. Magical stopping Santa from securing that tower. Like, right as the tower is about to be done, Magical goes for the push. And Santa has to go up the high ground, loses everything, pushing back. Those Hallowers, if they go down, Santa has nothing going forward. One goes down, Santa's ability to push is just that much more limited. While all this time, Magical's been wiping out Santa's... Santa's outposts. Like their Santa, main base is almost down. Santa it probably won't die. Mining. Santa will, will kill it, but still. Yeah, Santa's not mining. Santa's got nothing. Mm, losing a whole base of mining. Of course, he has a Bastion that mines for one base worth, and he had their base fully mining. He didn't lose most of his modes that he just sent to the other base. It's not too bad, but those those Frums did their job this game. They, uh... Poor Santa trying to go for the push and was hoping the base was at the north, but instead the tower is down. Nope. And the third base is up for Magical. Yeah, Magical knew exactly what to do. Had it perfect.
Uh, a few frumps here and meta. Yeah, Magic has complete control of this game. Santa's gonna have to pull Rabbit out of his hat to get back into this game. But Santa's known for doing that. Over the blood bounce. Not upgraded this time. Just small blood bounce. Yeah, kind of surprising. They could do that, but I just to finish it off. Yeah. Don't need extra health. Every, everything else is distracted. Santa once again forward. Magical, bit of a tighter position, but the army, they have a big enough army, they don't have to worry about the high ground. Yeah, it's all, sometimes it's all about the size. Sometimes you want yep. the you want the quantity, the, the quality, but the quantity is enough in this case. As the magical jumps on his opponent, kills all units, jumps on top of the Hallowers. Hallowers are not long for this world, and neither is Santa's hopes in this game. CG is out. We head for game number two. Yeah, Santa doing a solid job there. So will me see if they have an option. Like, see what answer they have. This is a little bit of an awkward situation. I think for Santa, they've they had an okay-ish start, <clears throat> but they really struggled to continue pushing it. Yeah, he did. He did have some struggles there. He's trying to. His push was fun. Is that tower though? They could never quite get that tower. And Magical is always good at getting him out of position. And that's really the name of the game between these two players. And what makes Magical really good is just his army movement in general, able to get in those positions and forcing the opponent to try and follow, but you just can't follow mm -hmm. him quite perfectly. No. And Magical just pounces at the right moment, the right place. And Satan needs to, needs to do better next time. Yeah, Frontiers is a bit of a different map instead of uh, the last time. A little bit. But there's still the Ancient in the middle, which is what we want, and Santa does it all for Zol, as Magical sticks to Mala. And I kind of, I do like this, Magical has always been a big Mala fan uh, from his early days playing the game. He's always, like he used to play a lot of Orzum when Orzum felt mm -hmm. a bit more powerful, but he switched to Mala after that and pretty much stuck with her for a while, so it's nice to see him come back to his origins. Yeah, they were, they were playing around kind of everything, but Mala I would say is their main. Oh yeah. All right, double fast expansion. Magical, confident they can deal with Santa because Santa, Santa also heading for fast expansion. Yeah. They are, they are. They aren't really going for the. They know magical can, can answer early aggression, so they're just gonna play the mid game. So keep an eye out for how many altars because uh, double altar is uh, double altar with a bunch of bone stalkers is still an option. I'm like, magical is not totally out of the woods. Yeah. Well you know, the other thing is, as soon as you see exp an expansion, you kind of stop worrying quite as much. Because you know the expansion's there, and when the expansion's there, mm -hmm. you can... You, you know you don't, you won't have that fast of an army. You can, That's true. Like, you can pretty much produce the same thing as he has. So, yeah, we'll have to see what, uh, what their game plan is. Uh, Santa, confident as much in the macro game as he is in the non-macro game. But Magical has seen the cheese as those two are pretty much practice partners from from, from months ago. And I've been playing constantly against each other. They know what's up. I am curious, though, what exactly they're going to go with this. Because you're right, they do know what's up. But do they know... Like, Magical knows, like, yeah, Santa could go in. But Santa can just go in, summon Zol, and do a ton of damage. Yeah. That's always the risk. That's always the thing that Magical has to watch out for. And... Yeah, Santa. It's more. It's a. It's a continuous threat throughout the game. And both of them heading for teapots on the. Yeah, both of them heading for the pyro camps on the respective sides. Don't want to. Oh, are they? Oh. Okay, they're gonna fight for. They're gonna fight for one of the pyro camps. Or Santa just wants to keep the pyro away from Magical's claws. I'm not entirely sure what they expect to gain since the pyro miner would be killable afterwards. Yeah, it's not. It's... I guess denying oh. magical the pyre miner is still a thing. Yeah, there's a few. Just, yeah, I'm not quite sure at this point. I'm like, okay, do they want to go for that camp? And it's at the end of the day, heading for this camp, but now. Yeah, okay. Magical's coming right, in. Well, but prevents... doesn't even. Oh, yeah, Santa takes it. Got Santa's got it. Yeah, Santa. Santa Magical's, able to... Magical's able to get a kill out of that, so he can be at least content with that. But behind this, Santa getting the other camp on the north. Teapot gets attacked. Oh. oh, there's no threat anymore. They, yeah, the Pyre Miner's free now. Yep. And Magical, All right, Santa's way ahead. Yeah, Magical can get both Pyre Camps on the east side, but Santa can, can try to jump on top of them. Uh, but he might not reach in time to get the second Pyre Camp at the bottom either. 
Okay, behind this, what are they What is Santa going to do with it? Santa already going for the throne, thrums. They've got a significant bone starker army. Yeah. And Magical does not have the Neurosight, so he does... Oh, no, he does have the Neurosight. So he'll have Offering and Zakals to do a big timing push. Uh, thrums have been revealed, though. Oh, I don't know, have they? No, they haven't. They have not yet been revealed. Yeah, that would have been a bad. dangerous uh, proposition early enough. Uh, Magical does not know they're coming, but knows that the threat exists. And also knows that their opponent... That Santa's got a significant pyre advantage going forward. Yeah, it's a it's pretty decent pyre advantage. Magical cleared a few towers though on his side, which I don't know, he thought he did uh, to get that power pretty close to his opponent though. Yeah, is that going to be Santa's push? Like, Santa's clearly wants to get something. Like, they want to start something. It's they like want they to start a distraction, I think, more than anything. Yeah, but the, the issue of the distraction is that uh, Magical has a bit of a has a pretty big truck coming for him, for him if he decides to just jump on his opponent. Of course, defensive towers are here, and tagging into a defensive tower is how you can lose the game. But at least it's the thrums. It's the thrums. Santa going around the back has thrums. All could drop Zol into the back lines in his base. On top of it. <laughs> and there's nothing here to stop it. Well, Magical's going for the counterattack, so killing your opponent's base while that happens can be pretty good. Oh, there it is. Yep. Zol comes in. Oh, goes for directly for the base? Oh, yeah. That's exactly it. Yep. The symbiotes oh, will stop it. But behind this, Magical going for the counterattack. So both of them attacking and killing their opponent's base. Of course, killing the killing the Godheart's a bit better than killing the natural. Uh, As Santa comes back, comes back to help defend, but does he have enough? He doesn't have that many units compared to Magical. Magical has a pretty big army. Oh, and all that investment in Thrums is not paying off for Santa. Yeah, it costs a lot of stuff. Of course, behind this. He might just be able to get it. The Aravor comes out. The two Aravors come out just in time. Out With goes for it. Does in. not care. Suicide attack to get rid of the main base. Magical so pulls back. Yeah, both players lose a base. Uh, behind all this, we can look at the army value. Santa has a lot of army value in those... Uh... Oh. He... Okay, heads for the tower. Can get, lose a few mass yeah. hunters from it. Drop. Magical going for the map. Yeah, yeah, but Magical wants the map control. Yeah, it's decent map control, but here comes the army from Santa, and he's coming in. We come in in time to. He won't come in in time to defend the tower, but he's coming in in time to go for the next push. Oh, the throne is distracting enough, putting magical, keeping magical close enough to Santa's army. Gets a few picks. Santa's able to thin, thin the crowd a touch. And we're back to the tower, and we can't really yeah. attack into. Uh, so yeah, both of them re-expanding, and long distance. Oh, no long distance mining, possible? Oh, or... weird. More importantly, it's... though, Magical's... Th that was, like you said, their god heart. So Magical, their ability to build more tech, more, like, they can't really build... Oh, no. They can't build a lot of things, actually. Okay, coming back for Zol. Coming back in for Zol. Wants to kill the building. Well, it's still building, but won't quite be enough. Mass Hunter's coming in, but that's a nice skills on the Mass Hunters as well. You never they have managed to get a few of the thrums down. Oof. Santa still pushing hard. It distracted enough. No buildings will die, but a lot of mass hunters have to go to make that happen. Oh, uh, that's the price you play. You pay for uh, forcing your opponent to spend all that power on these two attacks. He killed one god heart, but didn't kill the other building. Uh, behind us, Magico heading, getting some incubators to help with the front line. And Santa wants to go for it. Gets a nice round on this. Gets a really nice arc. But is it enough to keep pushing? He even has a Dread Sister at the back, but the Dread Sister... We'll catch it root the units, so he's able to run back, but run back fast enough. Uh, Red Seer's looking... Okay. The call's coming to defend. Santa's able to haul another casters. Whew. Okay, he, he needs to keep those, those Red Sisters alive, but now he doesn't have a tower, and all he's for his base as the army is upon is so much bigger. Match goes still pushing forward with all his units, jumping in, and... Rain of Blood comes down for Magical. Magical oh, uses ultimate to jump off everything. Santa needs to keep the Red Seers alive. So calls work, work in overtime as well, but does not matter. Magical, Magical forcing Santa back takes a pull, puts the natural in a precarious position as Santa Claus gets reinforcements. Santa on the second pass, able to push back. Magical wiping out Santa's economy, but can they take out the natural expansion again? Santa. Oh, it's going to make them pay dearly for it. 
Blood Plague thinning out some of Magical's forces, but Magical will still manage to take that natural expansion down. And Santa Claus, once again, falling behind economically for a slight army lead, do manage to get some damage in the back line for themselves. Magical's not getting this for free, but the costs... Cost for Santa Claus was not cheap. Another Zol come into the Allo lane to try and get a bit more damage here. Might not be enough, as as you said, Santa might have a small army lead, but he needs more than that if he wants to go for the all-in. At this point, I think he needs to go for the all-in. He needs to try and do some counter damage, or else he's just so far behind without his natural. Well, they got rid of the... I got rid of all the symbiotes, at least, so that's going to yeah, put ma sa Magical back a bit. Actually, I think it's about even, come to think of it. If Santa didn't lose their own symbiotes in the process. Oh, attacking into the tower, did. though. If Magical's in position, he gets one of those as a cost from the get-go. And no Magical can feel free to keep pushing, but he doesn't need to. He has a, he has no. an extra base in his opponent. Now, Santa, I think, didn't quite realize how far forward Magical was there. Santa's, Santa's scouting is a little bit... It's quite defensive right now. Like, they want to make sure Magical's not going for any sneaky pushes, but they don't necessarily know where Magical's army is. I think for the next push. The other side, Magico. Magico wants power control, but misses the power cap. Huh? What the? What? Okay. Yeah, he misses a little flame. Oh, well. Yeah, I, I guess they did. Mm. Okay, he sees it now. He's like, okay, it's worth killing. Losing they? a few units. No, they're going for this round. They don't even care. They want to take out Santa's army entirely. Hey, he doesn't Santa need power. might not be able to hold this very well. Uh, Zola's coming out. Zola's dishing a Zola's lot of damage. Zola's coming out, but that surrounded Magical side got, like, it thinned out Santa's army, and Santa's, I mean, Magical is retreating, but, you know, get a solid position on the high ground, regroup, and Magical doesn't have anything to worry about. Uh, behind us, Santa expanding to the bottom left instead of to his natural, okay, double expanding to try yeah. and get back into this game. He knows how far behind nah, he's economically. Nope. And, nah, I doesn't want to. Doesn't even see the point. And that's that is our winners finals. We are gonna have Magical moving on to the grand finals as our top the top side who only has to win two games. Santa will be going to the losers finals, but first we will have losers semifinals as Itlander is going to be the relevant player here. So heck yeah, we're ready for a rematch. So we're heading to our, so our lower bracket semifinals where we have Itlander versus Flicky, which was our first map of the day. Oh. And uh, they just both end up back here. So it'll be an interesting match between both of them as uh, Itlander took it 2-0 the first time. But honestly, mm -hmm. those games were pretty, well, at least the second game was very close. And Flicky, as he's been newer to the game, or at least rediscovering the game, well, every yeah. single game <laughs> is a new experience for him. And he's just learning for every game he plays. So this can be completely different from what we've seen initially. And... You know, I'm just looking forward to see what Fleeking comes up with this time to try and take out Itlander. I mean, they've clearly been practicing. Oh yeah, no, he, he has his fundamentals down. He's played Immortal from the start, so he knows what's up. He just needs to figure out what meta he wants to get into and figure how he wants to play the game. Yes, exactly, which is... That's a bit of a chanion. Yeah, no. Um... So we'll see how he, re how he reacts. Itlander last time also chose both Immortals. Itlander comfortable changing it up. Uh, Flicky, he, he's been liking Zoe a lot since he's come back, and which makes sense when you start playing and you just want to stick with one Immortal sometimes, just uh, to get used to everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've been playing, they have been playing Zoe, and that's an interesting Immortal to start with, so. So I thought they, I, I kind of figured that they knew about Zoe's, some of the ridiculous things right now for Zoe. <laughs> no. Uh, he doesn't need that. Flicky believes in himself. He's he's going to use his uh, ability of not to... Uh, they're killing buildings really quick, quick abilities like Santa. Santa likes uh, doing the special things, and he did. And he did it well. That's true. But a base for a base uh, sometimes just leaves the whole world moneyless. At least for him. I thought you were going to say base for a base is the whole world acidic. Oh, yeah, that also works. Both acid everywhere. I'm actually excited. I feel like Itlander heading for Ajari. So the more we haven't seen this tournament yet. Yay, my other main. Exactly. Ajar is very fun about keeping her units alive. Well, it's all about, you know, hunting down units and killing them. And yeah, so <laughs> kind of counter immortals. In their, not their play style necessarily, but their vision of how to do stuff. I guess you're right. They always feel kind of similar to me because it's like both of them are very micro-focused. Yeah. 
But you're right. That Zol is much more about is hunting. Is trying to do the exact opposite. Yeah, Zol just wants to hide. Just wants to hunt on everything and kill stuff. And uh, yeah, not quite the, the way for your way. So on the top left we have Flicky playing as Zol. On the bottom right we have Itlander in the red shorts playing as Ajari. We'll see where this leads us. Teapot heading right for his position at the top again for Flicky. Wants to see complete vision of that. Or no, he's gonna go scout the base. What am I saying? Yeah, they're fine. They know what's up. Yep. And Flicky, E for first. Okay, E for first. Uh, Itlander, E for first into its expansion. That's a side. safer strategy. Like, yeah, a bit safer. Against Zol. Yeah, Zol can come up with some funky things, but he's scouting it out and nothing funky from Zol. Expanding first, going into Altera. Ooh, Altera before E for Zol. Well, to be fair, it's a little funky. That's a yeah. little funky. And then keep yeah, an eye out for Licky. If they're going to go for some early harassment coming in here. Yeah, he can do a double alter and get a lot of bone stalkers out before getting an ether. And that can be... Oh, that can be a, a bit much to handle in the early game. Uh, but Atlander knows how to handle it, hopefully. And if he doesn't, well, maybe we'll go... Uh, maybe he'll lose a base. But he really shouldn't as the base has gone down for Flicky. There's nothing too aggressive here. No. Oh, okay. There it is. No, Flicky was just... Flicky was fainting. Mm. Yeah, I'm waiting for the teapot to get out. And for him to think, oh, you still don't have Aether? I guess you're going to go for a lot of Alter. And Flicky's like, nah. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, he has to spend on something. Is he just going to fast expand? I'm just wondering where he's going to go with all his extra alloy he accumulated. You know, fast expansion has been Flicky's thing. Like, they have been very aggressive trying to take expansions. It would fit. Well, Is faking the third base is not as good as just getting the extra alloy from uh, upgrading your base, so maybe that's his plan right now. And yeah, he's even getting his uh, symbiotes out and early, start mining and uh, reproducing them from both base at once. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. No pirate camp time. Well, anyway, Flicky's. Flicky certainly has at least some kind. Yeah, I guess they're going for that next expansion. Yeah, I guess they certainly have a position to start setting up their economy. They're it's they're very much relying on Eatlander staying passive, which is fair. Eatlander hasn't really been pushing anything beyond economy, but now oh. Ajari does like to send kill squads. Like it often, will have kill squads as a part, just kind of run around the map, and, and then Flicky get... steals the pyre. <gasps> they do. You're right. Whew, 150. Hey. Actually, that's that's huge. It is Flicky's... huge, especially in the short game. Yeah, Flicky no. has Zol up. They they could actually just drop Zol anytime. And yeah, there's not going to be Heaven's Aegis. But... No, well, there is going to be Heaven's Aegis, but that's it. Yep. There's no yeah. way for Eatlander to go forward. They can't just they can't deliver from evil back from any harassment as they wanted to push forward. So Flicky knows Eatlander can't be aggressive right now. Not Wait, safely, as you say anyway. That, as you say not that, safely uh... aggressive. They have to, they have to win. So they can be aggressive, ride or die. Yeah, and if Atlander catches his opponent again, like in that first game where it just ended after that, uh, Flicky can be in a lot of trouble now. Those units Oof. are... Oh man, this is... Uh... Flicky... Do they only have the one... They only have the one altar, don't they? Yeah, they do. They went straight for tech. Flicky wow. is... Oh man, this is super risky. They get... They went for that expansion as well. Okay, getting Flicky's into entire game plan, going for this super risky mid game, like, like rush the mid game. Yeah, get those oh. frums out. The frums are going to come out, but the frums are not that much it, damage. Is it in and... time? Okay, okay Zol pops. Flicky's, Flicky's relying on that to keep them alive, and it's it's working. They lost a base, but they they kept their tech. Well, they lost their base. They weren't supposed to take that early anyway. So that's true. <laughs> they canceled. I think they canceled it anyway, so it's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, and the Frums are out yeah. now, and with the Frums out, he won't be able to die to anything since none of this shoots up. Uh, it all depends if uh, he wants to keep well, pushing Well, they won't well. die to anything, but it's a question of whether or not Flicky wants to give it away. And it looks like, nope, they're, it's defense is too important. It's too important to keep things alive. Okay, well, the Frums are going to get at least one Separate kill on the retreat from Itlander. And behind us, Itlander getting his Senos and a Warden. We haven't seen much Warden play so far. Uh, as the Sentinels, well, wouldn't have seen Warden since there hasn't been any uh, any Ajari yet. But the Sentinels coming out to help defend against those Frums. And, okay, there's a few more Frums coming out. It's not only the initial free. No, but there was an Amber Room for Flicky. They're clearly, they're clearly not going to be focused on just going pure air. 
No, they've, Flicky's, got, they've got diversity of their build. No, Flicky is all about getting those fronts just to get map control enough to force his opponent back yeah. while he expands like, behind I it. I will take my third. I will take my third. You will not stop me from taking my third. I will take my third. And his fourth. His fourth <laughs> is coming down real soon. Trust me. Yeah, you're, yeah sure it is. <laughs> Nah, that display style. I was like, oh, I'm just going to take it in your face. I'm going to take one of your oh, own. Oh, you're right. Yeah, because that was the Game of Frontiers where Flicky had like seven bases. Yep, because that's how Flicky likes to play. And it yeah. just comes down to taking the right fights. And as long as his teapots scout out the opponent and know where he is, look at those look at those units. Oh, you're coming here? Oh, look at that. The Frums can pick you off as you try to run back home. Of course, it was a dual prong attack. Or dual prong uh, out, uh, out course? I'm not sure how to say that. I, I'm not sure I'm either. It's okay. The, those dervish are coming on the on the west side and looking for more damage to do on his opponent. You see that space is not quite mining, so they can just keep flopping forward. <laughs> oh, oh resin's going to come that off. Oh, okay, that. See, I saw that soul foundry. I thought Flicky was going to wall off that choke point, but no. Not entirely. Just not entirely. a little bit. And yeah, behind this, he takes no damage. Those frums are still alive. Uh, Teapot sees everything isn't. in the back. <laughs> yeah, the Dervish is not. It uh, one on the ground. Bone Stalkers against Dervish. Got to be careful about that engagement. Oh man, like see, I'm kind of wondering because Flicky went really heavy on expansions on the Frontiers game, and it didn't totally pay off because they didn't they didn't convert it to army in time. Yeah. So I'm kind of wondering if they learned their lesson on that. It looks like they sort of have. Like they are hey, focusing on expansions, but they're not quite so single-minded about it. Yeah, well, that's the danger, right? We look at the army, the population right now, 55 to 92. He really needs to get it up to at yeah. least the same level as his opponent. And if he, you're going to go for industry expansions in the next three, four minutes, you need to double your opponent in all those, uh, that army because you have that many more I mean, bases as it's understood too. <laughs> Flicky does have resonance on the way. So they, they're... Or, or they have them, but so it's like they're Behemoth. they are in a position where they can deal some splash. They have they have a decent tech for dealing with things, but yeah, now Itlander's ready. They're up. They have, they have, they the have army. a lot. No, Itlander's been doing Most it two, two base timing push. Yeah, they have. Been yes. So it comes now, down to can he defend it? Flicky's moving out on the map at the worst possible time. He's coming out, and his units are all out of position. Has... Oh no! No, the Wraith Bow is completely caught out right at the start. Setting up to deal with this, but that's the question of the Wardens. Can the Wardens be taken care of? Well, the residents do get blocked off, so they don't get taken out. The Zapari aren't going to be causing too many problems. That leaves the Bone Stalkers ripped apart by the Dervish because the Dervish will will not stop. And the Sentinels finally come in for the only anti-air here, but... Now, Flicky, the... Flicky just lost everything. Yeah. Flicky has his fourth base up, but with Hitlander only still on what? two bases getting his third up right now... He needs all his money to go into units to be able to do some damage as Itliner comes to that third base and... I mean, Flicky just... could summon Zol again. They could summon Zol a couple more times. The Flicky's got options. It's just yes. not a whole lot of them. This this third is looking big like it's not going to last long. Well, the big advantage here is at least the units are attacking his base instead of his units, so units can attack without being That's focused true. down. Uh... But yeah, with Zal coming out this time, Itlander's not too worried about it. Just moves back out. There's only three anti-air units, so those frums can dish out the damage. More Sentinels following through on the backside. Itlander establishes his own third. Has Flicky has his fourth base running. Uh, Flicky needs to make a lot of units. And army value is close, but army eh, army supply is close, but army value is very far apart. Well. Flicky did manage to defend. They held their third base, so Itlander... That timing push didn't actually work out. Yeah, not quite. He expanded behind it, so it wasn't they all did. in. Yeah. It wasn't all in, but... Well, I, I think he did enough damage, as in he won the fights, which was the basic point he needed to do, at the very least, to come out ahead of it. He needed to win a fight, or else the, the number of bases of Flicky would just overwhelm him. At this point, mm. Flicky... Yeah, you know, Flicky's just going to keep uh, building up his stuff, and... Maybe some more behemoths. What is he going for next? What they only have one bone cap. I don't see them building a lot of behemoths. Oh, coming in for the counter attack, but Itlander looking to get uh, to get a counter around. No, there's not that many. Okay, here come the units. No, no. Flick's playing it smart. They yep. reducing the ether, making it a little harder to get Shire and Thrones. But Flicky doesn't want to lose their army in the process. Yeah. And mass warden from Itlander. Mass wardens are pretty fun, right? You can just jump in and out of stuff. Oh yeah. 
Like and, especially, explore, and especially as a jar, you can just teleport back home. He has the... They do. The they have the alloy to teleport small mud home. They also have... They're soon going to have the... Sorry, the pyre, rather. They're soon going to have the pyre to actually have salvation, just teleport everything home if it dies. That, that is another solution. Or just leave so it in the has options. They could, you know. Yeah, Islander has a lot of options to dish out the damage his opponent caused the pain that he doesn't want to receive. And Sentinels to sell the map. And here comes... Oh. You really? Flicky, you want to get the Flicky's thing? prompting it. Yeah, they, they're they prompting it. Hitlander seems a little uncertain about how actually pushing in on this. Yeah, it's got to be careful. All those frums, there's too many sandals now. They fit. And here comes the Heaven Jages. At this point, Flicky is in danger. Zoe comes out, but a little too late, as most of the units are already dead. And Zoe is out already. Comes out, gets gets kicked out of the fight, and... Nah, Hitlander. Flicky prompted too soon. Flicky prompted way too soon. Yeah, Flicky with... Uh... A very small army right now. It's under a dominating lead as the Sandos come up and kill the Arox before they can hit. He's yeah. trying to win this fight, but... They really uh, are, but unfortunately, like, those Dervers still being alive means Flicky cannot go in with their main anti here. Like, they can't get rid of the... They, like, Hitler's army is going to be fine as long as the Dervers stay in. <laughs> Game Boy is coming in. Wraith Bowls at the back. And nothing much as the Ancient goes to Hitler. He used, his, he used his power to win the fight, and now uses more power to win this. Flicky comes out with Zol, but it's too little too late, as he's still pushing forward, but he can't really afford this fight. He can't afford to lose all these units again, and Flicky yeah, does not the from evil. Oh, wait, oh. what? Did it? Oh, that was, oh no, they're not even going to bother. They they see they can just take this. Fl Yitlander's going for it. Flicky's... Flicky is in trouble. Oh, here comes Finally the the right time. Okay. Yeah, does manage to get rid of a few of the Wardens. Mm, but not quite as many as you hope for. No, but Hitlander keeps their bases alive. Still only at four, and Flicky is now looking to take their fourth as well. The, sorry, Hitlander taking their fourth as well, so Flicky's advantage has been lost, and the bigger problem for them is now production. Yeah, the, the, the army of value just never caught up to his opponent in the Jari. Nope. Uh, the Arjari <laughs> player is getting to Thrones now, getting to that tier, that later latest tier of units, the tier 3.5, and more power coming out for Flicky, so he can summon Zo a few more times, but Zo alone won't be enough to, to win the fights. Unless Flicky can manage to build up. I mean, they are getting... They are getting something. I just don't see them having a whole lot of population capacity. Oh, killing this base will be a a, a, a good catch at the very least. <gasps> they, got the der they got the Dervish! Oh, that is Ooh. huge. That will be huge for the next fight. Oh, yeah, Dervish can do so much Yeah, there's no the Dervish premise. left. There's never, the Bone Stalkers can actually do stuff now. <laughs> that was the biggest weakness. That actually means that all the all of Eatlander's air units are far more vulnerable than they used to be. Ooh, oh, those are dervish left. Oh, the arcs go right on top of us. Send those. No oh more no, those. there's no more dervish. But is it going to be enough? Here comes Zoe from the back, but Zoe gets completely dominated immediately. And ah oh, no, they didn't, this. they didn't close the gap. No, then Heaven's Aegis on top of that. Eatlander able to push, take out Flicky's army once again, and should be able to find Flicky's fifth. Or, yeah. no, they don't see it. They don't see it. Yeah, Flicky behind this gets his fifth, and here comes the Arox once more to try to get it. There's a small split from it ladder, but not, might not be enough. <gasps> no, Ooh. it is not enough! The Wardens do go down! Flicky... Only two left. Flicky's just opened the doors. It just it cracked it open a little bit, but it's something. Yeah. It's something to get them back into this. The Thrones are going to be a problem, but absent the Wardens, yeah, the Eatlander... Reinforcements... Yeah, it's not so much... There's just Jeez. more. There's more reinforcements coming in from Atlanta still, despite the higher economy mm -hmm. for Flicky this whole time. Uh, the base is up and running, and here comes a small run by of a few a few Sapari. They could get caught out of position though. Is no, they haven't been seen. Just, oh, they're they're fire. Never mind. Not even going for the run by. Flicky's got to be careful. Again, they don't have. Like, they've been again punching them of their weight using Zol. And solid yeah. unit composition and micro, but this is not going to work. This fight coming in right now, Itlander's oh, gone is such an advantage. Flicky cannot take this. They do not have any splash units. They do not have any any anti light. They have no way of getting rid of certainly the throne as well. Everything here is just too much. There's too many things. Well, he has a few wraith bows at the froms, but yeah, the throne is no. The, the a lot that of wraith was a good knockdown. There's too many Sapari from Flicky. Yeah, sorry from Itlander. Yeah, he's going to try his best and. Uh, yeah, okay, Lander behind us. He's sending both his... Uh... To be fair, he doesn't really need these units. They're going to do more damage as being counterattack, and they're doing a lot of damage just going for the bases. 
forcing Fleeky to multitask like crazy, try to deal with everything, and heading back home to try and defend, but the army of Atlanta is there. <laughs> oh, no, 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 not the Ark Mothers, no, or the, the, the Wraith Bows, no. He's just not a position. Heaven's Aegis comes down once more as uh, he tries to defend yeah. as much as he can, and yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no! Hmm. Well... Well, Fleeky comes in, yeah, connection I lost. don't know... I mean, Elander's ahead, but I don't know if I call I it far. ahead enough to call it. Yeah, it, it, it's a hard call. Personally, I don't think Fleeky had any way back, but that's me. <laughs> I think it's like... there's a. I'd give it like a 20% chance Fleeky could come back. Yeah, something like that, like 20%, which isn't much, but yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think that's enough to... Well, I don't know. I'll ask the players what they think, but I don't think they have to call it. Yeah, no. We we'll, won't we'll, we'll make the decision. We'll ask the players what they think, and uh, we'll see. We'll be right back with you to after we get to news of the players, I guess. But yeah, it was a yeah. Elander just got to, got a pretty dominating lead from the start and wasn't able to keep going from there. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, it's it's unfortunate that games end with crashes. We don't have a uh, we don't have that many crashes and. Yeah, that's just how the games go sometimes. Yeah, I'm not sure if 80 20 is enough to call it one way or the other. I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, if it was 90 10, I'd be, I'd be okay with it. Yeah, I, I don't even know what 90 10 would mean. It's like, okay, the bases are 90 10 would basically down. be like you're, you're just knocking down the last, like they're knocking down the few bases. Yeah, that'd be even 90, like, that, 99 one yeah. or something at that point. It's like, yeah, yeah. Eh, hard to call. We'll leave it to the players and see if they want to reap the match or not. Yeah. Up to the admin as well. I mean, that's, that's basic. You? That's yeah. At this point, <laughs> that's true. Flicky was losing two bases at once. Yep. I kind of and like, the main army fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's more like if Flicky agrees, because I don't want to, like. Yeah, no, it's a tough one. I just don't want to have like, oh, I could have won if the admins hadn't called it because it was just the disconnection. It's like, no, 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 let's, let's double check. If Flicky agrees, yeah, you know, I would have been, I'd have been in a tough spot. Yeah, that's the thing, right? It's a pre off It's not the super big tournaments we... No. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we've only been gone for two hours. Like, we got time. True. So, at the same time, I don't want to make Magical wait too long either. True. That's the other thing, right? With these tool bracket tournaments, you want to go a bit faster because the people at the top... Yeah, the loser's bracket took a little bit... Okay, well... Okay, Flicky's, Flicky is conceding. So, we're going to be moving on to the Losers Finals with Itlander against Santa. All right, well, thank you, Flicky, for being a good sport about it. So, we'll head on to Santa's or Itlander. Santa versus Itlander. It's going to be a fun game on that side as well. So, it's funny because so far today, we've just been redoing the same matches over and over. So, we started with oh, Itlander yeah. versus Flicky. Oh, and yeah. then went to Santa versus Itlander. Then wow, I am Santa. so sorry. There are other six of you... <laughs> <laughs> who didn't get on stream. Actually, that's not true. It's the four of you. But the other half of the bracket that didn't even get on stream once. Yep. I'm yeah, sorry. So Itlander, <laughs> Flicky, Santa, Itlander, Santa, Magico. And then we're doing Itlander, Fli and then we did Itlander, Flicky. Now we're doing Santa, Itlander. And if Santa wins, it's going to be Santa, Magico again. I'm going to root for Itlander then. I want something just a bit different, you know? <laughs> Down with it Santa. Be, it would be a feather in Itlander's cap, that's for sure. Yeah, no. I can see Itlander doing it. He needs to... I get another's good enough to beat Santa. It's just it's against in like a 70-30 yeah. split, I guess, on who I think could win. Or maybe 80-20, I'm not sure. Statistics are hard, especially with something like this game. But he has a chance. He's not he's not completely outplayed or anything. He he's playing well. It's just not an easy thing to do. Beating the Santa, the memester of the Walter, and Well, that also have to be magical. I mean, granted Well, oh, yeah, but just, just getting Lander the... has gotten second place. Yeah, exactly. Just getting the grand finals is not something that he hasn't was... done before, so it's like, yeah. Actually, hang on. Atlanta got second place quite recently. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. 20, pretty... they, they beat Santa Claus, actually. They... I'm not surprised. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time they beat Santa Claus, if they do. It was a, it right. was, it was a 2-0 earlier for Santa against Atlanta, which we cast. It was. It, so. That's true. <laughs> so, so it kind but of last, into our heads. But, but yeah. two, the last 1v1 tournament what the Atlanta signed up for, it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, it was the twenty. So it was two tournaments ago. Atlander got second. Santa got third. So Atlander actually beat Santa. Okay. So let's see what they decide to go for. We're on the map Canyon once more. We've been liking Canyon a lot today. It's a great map. Mm -hmm. Signed, I think, by uh, 
uh, Superman in the in the dev team, who's who's known for having made a lot of great maps as well in the past in other games. Um, Man, it's a solid map. Yeah, definitely. Great, huh? a, a lot of different designs and stuff, a lot of different paths and different attack paths, good expansion pattern with multiple expansion patterns as well. Yeah, want to see what Sand and Itlander decide to go for this time. As we have it at the bottom right as a jar. Oh, a craft mirror. We haven't seen that yet today. Oh, yeah, we haven't. We haven't seen it in a long time, to be honest. Yeah, it's true. People have been liking Doraru. I've been liking Dorzol especially. I we have, but other than that one time on Frontiers that Santa pulled off against Magical or tried to, we have <laughs> not seen the Zol building damage. True. Which I think people just partly figured out how to deal with and partly just don't want to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> Well, here comes a fast expanse on both sides. Itlander getting that earlier Ether and Santa getting that earlier base. The other day, not too much of a difference. Uh, Santa heading for a building right after instead of going for Ether. So really concentrating on getting out his uh, Zentari as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And I get that. I love getting my Zentari out. You know, getting beefy boys on the map and ready to pounce on anything. With uh, the hallowed ground to help defend them. We're ready for those to come out. Is it no, like you don't like be beef? going for something aggressive too. I'm. A, you're it's, vegetarian. It's you're, you're I'm a bit not more a vegetarian. vegetarian. I just prefer chick. I prefer bird, or fish. Okay, it's more poultry. Mm, Pescatarian, yeah. not even. No, because you like birds still. Okay, well. Yep, bird and fish. Bird and fish, or bird, but not fish, beef. or fish, bird. Oh, should it be penguins? I don't. I don't. I've never eaten a penguin. Would penguin? Like it's watery, right? So penguins. I think it'd be must... like duck. Ooh, that'd probably be good. Pretty probably pretty fatty, I think, yeah. Yeah, it has to be. Okay, let's get some penguins in here. Do you think there's penguins on Nuoth? Or on Shale? Shale, probably. Nuoth apparently doesn't have a lot of Arctic climate. Okay, and even if there were, they would be super penguins. Yeah, they'd probably be, like, you know how penguins have like, ridge, almost like hooks in their beaks, in their mouths? Oh, yeah, yeah. Scary yeah, stuff. like that, except all over. Probably. Yeah, not fun. Not fun. Actually, no, there's a there's a contest though for the ability to get lore stuff, like to right. get to get Dylan to tell you lore secrets that involves making a nuanced creature. So if that inspired you guys to make a creature, go and do, write that in the lore channel in the Discord because you could learn something about the game and also yes. write some cool things. Yeah, someone please write about a super penguin. Uh, that's on that's on that's on Nuoth, and I'd be very happy with that. Super penguins can eat stuff like Walters and Walter steaks. That's all they feed on. You don't mention Walter. No, don't mention Walter. Walter docks you points. Well, eliminates you entirely. Yeah. <laughs> it's at at it might at best it docks you points. Yeah, exactly. At best it docks you point. Like uh, the only thing is the current one of the current entry the current I think the only current entry has a sort of like. It's not Walter, but it's really close to Walter, so it's like... It's as close as Walter as you can get while still make it relevant to the lore, kind of. It's like, yeah, yes. no, it all makes sense. It's pretty much yes. Walter, but it's not. But ah, thank it's... you, Yeti. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's not very stiff competition right now, so go and write stuff up. I think Pencil's <laughs> down is tomorrow evening, so... Yeah, Santa's gonna come up with uh, non-Walter, right? Oh, God. He he's gonna is find a way... Yeah, possible, yes. Uh, it'd, be organic, it it'd be an organic teapot. It would be an organic teapot. That's the other possible. option. Oh. No Santa. It's possible, but not like... Oh, Absolver Push. Those were popular for a while, but since they siege a bit slower, I'm not sure how well it works. Of course, with the hallowed ground of the Centauri, you get a pretty decent way to deal with it. That's a better question is, does Itlander care? Mm. Well, the tower's coming up as well. Yeah. But the if Itlander's trying to push place. into a choke point and making Santa Claus want to hold it, then it's all just might be fine. Oh, right, here we go. The first siege up is coming in. A slow siege up, which makes it much harder to just jump on top of your opponent. Okay, slowly but surely getting out. Oh, but now he's in range of the hallowed ground. Oh, that's not going to work out very well. Those absolvers are going to get sniped. Safari doing what they can to deal with it. Eatlander oh, drops Heaven's Eat just a bit late. Santa Claus is still threatened enough not to dive in, but that's they regroup. Here. Now they regroup. Itlander loses all of their Absolvers, and now there's nothing really putting Santa Claus back except just Micro, just Chitin. Yeah, and even they're, with the tower they're they're not back retreating. here, with the tower oh, here, yeah, there's no. nothing to Santa, kill this. Santa's got this unlock. Yeah, the most Itlander could have done there is just kill more units than he lost. Uh, just because or the tower... Or hold the choke point? 
Yeah, exactly. Like, get a minor, minor contain, make it harder to take that third. That's the only real win Hitlander could realistically have gotten. Yeah. Maybe without that tower, you could have gone some worker kills, but without, with the tower there, it's just, it, this push is just not as reliable as it used to be. But behind this, it wasn't all in. He was going for wardens. He was forcing Santa to stay back while he could tech up to something he wanted. Which is Santa honestly... is no. Santa knows. Santa's well aware of. But yeah. Yeah, well, he say that, but his only anti-air is free magi. So those those wardens, once they come out, they can dish the pain on all these units. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry, Voyeur. Apparently, I, didn't, I forgot that Voyeur had an entry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I thought Voyeur, there was someone else that had Actually, an entry well, there. I guess if we disqualify the one that's Walter-ish, then we only have Voyeur's entry. So it'd still be correct. It's not Walter. It's Walter-ish. As close to Walter as he can get, but still not Walter. So That's it's, something. It's, that's, it's really riding the line, and I... I I know I, Dylan I, I, well I, enough to know that he's not really a fan of people riding the line oh, like definitely. that. Oh, definitely. Definitely not, but I appreciate the effort. That's what I'm going to go for. I appreciate the effort, and you, this is not a fight that either of them want to take, kind of. It's like, Magi leans in yeah. the tower is here. Now you're pushing forward, but now you have no anti so the wardens are great. Okay, so Itlander taking a solid advantage off this. That, yeah, I'd say is a win for Itlander. Santa Claus did not, get, did not achieve any operational goals and lost a bunch of units in the process. Yeah, and Zentari, ooh, and a Magi are all very expensive. That's all oh, many lost units. That's, yeah, pretty much made, that's made up for the Absolvers. That's more oh, than made far. up for the Absolvers. Yeah, and getting the Magi at the end as well. Oh, man, all of those expensive units going down. And Santa behind us is not happy. Itlander taking his third, but there's nothing Santa can do about it. He needs to defend his base. Castigator's well, coming out as yeah. the anti-air. Yeah. Castigator's being... One Castigator being the only option Santa Claus currently has. They're likely to get more. Who's two Zephyr in the yeah. It's not too bad. Yeah, but they have uh, options. Ilander, yeah, Ilander might be forced to recall uh, to deliver from evil to get out of this, not lose too many units. Most likely we'll lose at least one of those Wardens as he tries to escape. Yeah, there's oh, the yeah, DFE. Alright, hey. goes... Does not get any moat kills, but does get does keep the Wardens alive, so... And keeps Just his opponent... Guy. Keeps it keeps his opponent at bay, which is the other yeah. important to me. He expanded, Kept him back, he allowed an expansion. Double expanded! They, oh. Itlander double expanded. Okay, that's dangerous. They are going, uh, yeah, that's dangerous is right. I don't want to say risky. This is just, this is fool, this is foolhardy. And this is reckless. He got, he got two Legion Halls as well. So he just had a lot of money oh, floating. So he decided to expand did. it that way. Oh man, I, I kind They're, of prefer two production structures instead. Yeah, Santa's honestly, on bases. <laughs> Santa might have problems just because of the Wardens. Like the fact that Santa does not have a whole lot of anti-air and Itlander has options to deal with ground as well, quite effectively. Like, Itlander can defend this. It might but... not be that easy. Oh man, those Wardens dish out yeah, the Yeah, is it a Pyrrhic victory? That's the question. And it looks like no! Santa's actually getting... Santa's getting wow. blocked! Oh, he's getting pushed back! Santa's entire army wiped out a few losses on Itlander's side, but... Man, Itlander's composition was near perfect. Yeah, I can't... I, I really didn't think that would happen. He was waiting for the Howlers to the back, and Howlers can make such a difference in these fights. And then being so far. too, with the Castigator stopping the Wardens from getting in, but now Santa Claus has no way to defend this. Itlander can just run roughshod. Oh, he doesn't. And then by this point, Itlander doesn't care. He has a fourth base coming up. He just yep. needs to defend everything, and he'll be good to go. So Santa knows he's taking his third, but so late, he needs to do something. He needs to cause some trouble to his opponent. And and so far, they've lost some to their army. It's hard to even call. What, what trouble can they even cause? One Sentinel, even two Sentinels isn't enough against the Wardens when they don't care. Yeah, the, and the Wardens definitely don't care. There's no end here on Itlander's side at all. He doesn't care. He's just jumping on units and killing as many as he can. And as many as he can is at least five of them. Five expensive tech units, too. Yeah. He gets the Pyro Camp and he runs home with his uh, Wardens, loses one of them. Might not be able to rebuild his Wardens afterwards. The air control goes completely to Santa. <laughs> including oh, Santa the, the four, Yeah, the forward tower. Yep. Uh, the counterattack comes in, but... No, that's not going to be enough. Nope. That's, yeah, especially that's not going to kill him in time. Time to run. No. Itlander, you got your information. Don't overcommit. Do not Don't overcommit. Don't overcommit. Uh, that's Salshin. Don't lose a Salshin. And yeah, he overcommitted a bit. The to... only thing he lost is the Salshin. Oh, never mind. This is the part. And <laughs> Zephyr can still jump forward. Nah, All okay, right. Well. That equalizes stuff a bit. Santa a lost, bit. Lost, lost his army at this phase. And Lander re lost his army at that one. Look at the army. Army population is close enough. Army value is pretty close. I mean, like Itlander's Santa's rebuilding small... fast. Yeah, because there's a small army advantage on Santa, but Itlander's rebuilding. I'm not too worried. 
Units are coming in fast. Oh, the Ancient, though. Santa's got that. Santa knows. It's almost 10 minutes. Got to get ready yeah. on that. And the Atlander... It's going to have a struggle here. Santa's pretty well defended everything. Yeah, especially with the tower in the north, he'll see it. Uh, Santa can say, okay, maybe his opponent goes for a tower and be behind it, he'll go for the base kill. Which, honestly, I, I kind of like from him. Like, getting a base kill is more... Oh, well, it's not more important. Both, both are really, really powerful uh, tools. I mean, I think base kill... Given how much Pyre Elander currently has, base kill is definitely going to be much more impactful than anything they get from the Ancient. Yeah, or the tower, for that matter. Yeah, so like, the base, the base kill is the goal, and Santa Claus is nothing to stop them. Itlander gets out of there, still up one, still an even on bases because they have that other third. Yeah, good on Itlander getting that third. It's not fully mining though, so he needs to upgrade that. But at least he has that, right? He has the yes. other birds that are equal in economy, and Santa doesn't know about the bottom base. Uh, they Santa are, still they are catching out Itlander's forces though, over in the can in the middle of the canyon. Oh no. Oh no, that's a that's a big loss again. The, with the rocks not destroyed, there's not really an easy path back. The Saushins are again the expensive units one you don't want to lose. Hitlander looking to regroup. And does at least manage to keep the Saushin alive this time. Yeah. And here goes the ancient fight. See, here's the thing, Santa's gonna get that ancient, and then Hitlander has to worry about pillar drops. <laughs> Well, Elander's coming, but a bit slow. Of course, if he can get a few of those expensive units behind us, and Santa knows it's better to fight, especially at the top of the hill. Don't want to go up a hill to fight. Uh, coming from oh. the back. Sentinels are out of position. So Elander at least has... They can surround, gets the hit, gets the Evans Aegis. He needs the Heaven's Aegis and needs to come back on that tower. But going that, down on top of the no, units. No, the Ancient's going to fall. The Ancient of Santa's... Oh, oh is, is it? it? Is so it? Close. It's so close. Elander pulls oh, it back! It. The last pixel, Itlander pulls this entirely back, pushing Santa Claus to their hill tower, to the near tower. I mean, now you have to be careful. He's at the bottom of they the do. hill. Like, it's always the bottom of the hill you have to be careful of. And Santa comes back in, but Santa does not have that many units. He's trying to push back, that's so many units for Itlander. Santa comes back, a few more units. The Magi comes back as reinforcement, but one Magi won't make the difference. Uh, but the units no, are all not low HP at this point. Yeah, you can start on low HP. The tower might be able to help, but behind this, the base is still growing back up for a ladder. <laughs> Both going back, going for their fourth base. So equal on the economy Lander at this point. Not even going for. Nope, just tower. All tower, all day. And that's that's fair. Uh, prevent that staging ground. Yeah. And okay, need to run back now. You can't keep going for this. Ancient alive on both sides. Pretty even. Yeah, but hey, no, that's that after Eatlander almost lost it completely. Exactly. Granted, no. Santa has been farming Pyre around the side, so Pillar Drop is still on the table. And Eatlander... They killed the tower. They killed a lot of the army. I think that's the main the main thrust at the moment, is just keep Santa Claus occupied. Because the longer Santa stays occupied, the less likely that Pillar Drop is even going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, you need to find a good position to, with the Pillar, because if not, you just run away from the Pillar and don't care. Yeah. So, I mean, right now, Eatlander could actually start really really outpacing Santa for her army. Now, Elander's having a struggling to focus on that, but they do have a very strong economy right now. They do have the ability to just start powering past their opponent for okay, here, army value. Here comes a Dervish rash from, from Santa, what he's known for. But behind this, it seems he's, Santa stopped caring about the Ancient, leaves it to his opponent, and Dervish gets in. There's not many moats mining because this base has barely come up. Ooh, no, that's just going to be... As a defense. Oh, good to see. And yeah, the Dervish can yeah. run in here. They can for a little while. Itlander's not letting that happen for long. Now there's trapped. No? There we go. Two dead Dervish for a handful of moats. Behind yeah. us, Santa taking his fifth base. And that's when Santa comes out ahead of all of this. If he can get his economy just a bit faster, it will be great. But at this point, Itlander. Itlander, Itlander, they are even on army value and they've just built up. Another like twenty percent of their opponent army like population. So that army yeah. is going to start skyrocketing in like thirty seconds. Atlanta's yeah. gonna gonna have a solid timing. Yeah, and Atlanta behind this, splitting up his army as you should do. Sandos going to see that, but won't really be able to do anything as those. Okay, the fifth base will be denied. Can Santa deny Atlanta's third once more? Uh, probably not. Heading back for another ancient kill. Yeah, it's just about that time again. Okay, Empire Unbroken doesn't want to let that die. 
Alwars dishing out the damage from the back. And Santa Claus does... Santa Claus can keep Eatlander from going up that ramp. And Santa Claus can maintain the control. Same time, Santa with the backline thrones. Oh no, but the Forcing thrones are going to get a retreat from Eatlander. Yeah, they can't um, be dangerous. That's not a position the thrones wanted to get in. And at this point, the kindest round of one goes down and the other two are having Santa trouble. forced to engage. Santa moving, moving to try to save their thrones, but it's too late. The thrones are down. The rest of the forces coming in from behind. But having been split up, Santa's army simply does not have the strength to fight this. Eatlander completely pushing Santa back. And behind this, the, the attack keeps on coming. He, Santa already uses Empire Unbroken in another tower, so now this tower is alone. It's going to be taken out of Separi. The fight's still happening in the center. Ark Mother is using their ability to keep the units alive. Thrones getting taken out by the Castigators. Santa Claus still has the Howlers at the front and the tower to help defend this. But, but the Howlers have nothing in front of them. The Howlers are completely dead. The tower goes down. Santa Claus does manage to defend their third after losing the tower, but that's expenditure of pyre that means they cannot push an offensive. Midlander behind it, 300 pyre to rebuild to, for the next push. Yeah, they could just drop it. They also could have just dropped a salvation during that fight, but they could just drop a salvation in the next fight. Like, they have so much money. They have so much pyre. They have so many options to keep everything alive for a real push. Yeah, Santa miscalculated there, putting his four thrones right into his opponent's base and letting them get taken out like that just puts such so much pressure on him to try and win the next fight. He needs he needs the big next big army win fight if he wants to stay in this game. Hmm. Okay, another counterattack coming in. Santa sees there's no fifth base, but Eatlander's getting ready for it. On yeah, Eatlander's got a yeah. They've, they've got they've fifth got and a fifth base somewhere. Fifth and sixth yeah, base at exactly. The same time. So Sanders thinks, oh, they're going for a fifth base expansion. And the answer is no. It's two. It's yeah. five and six. And Santa behind us can't really afford to double expand or expand even once. Uh, so Lander... They can't afford not to, though. It's 16 minutes in the game. They're bashing stuff mining. Their main base is going to be mined out in a few minutes. Yeah, 1600 already. That's uh... Ancient is back out, and Santa's on top of it immediately. Can the... Yeah, the power might just be enough to get him back in the game immediately. But Atlanta's coming on top of it and going for the unit kills. Can yeah, get to get the unit kills, the pillar won't be able to do much. Ark Mother comes in to defend, and Santa at least gets the pyre. He gets 200 pyre right now. He's equalizing Itlander there, so he has but a chance. Only the power there. They are. They do have a chance. The pillar, a pillar push could be something that Santa could use, or even just pillar defense. Like, Santa has everything on the table. Yeah, Santa can still take it slowly, but surely Orzum is made for that, for those tower defenses, and just survive based on that. He has a lot of cascaders to deal with the back, and... Okay, there's here Pillar, we go. there's Salvation as a result. Pillar drops, takes out the couple of Castigators. That's a bit of a loss, but the throne's already gone for Santa, so Itlander keep pushing. Itlander's not going to have much luck breaking through this, but all they have to do is take damage. Any damage they deal is free damage with the Salvation on. Yeah, but all units are coming back at 75% health, so, uh, so not much HP here. Losing one of his thrones, expensive loss. A loss he can pretty much afford since he has less bases. At this point, Santa has to be careful he keeps pushing. You want to keep pushing to your opponent's tower. That tower kind of saved you. Don't keep pushing into another tower. Yeah. Don't 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 go too far. But Eatlander, they kept their army up. The salvation paid off, and Orza, or Santa now just doesn't have enough pyre or barely has enough pyre to re to Empire and Broken to spot. He did Empire and Broken in the last fight to keep that tower alive and get that yep. AoE with it. So that really made a difference. At this point, here comes another fight, another or a small fight at this, this outpost. Sapari. Yeah, Sapari getting for the tower. Again, the moat's coming out to help defend. Uh, behind this, Itlander heading out for another, for another attack on the other side to try to keep his squads. opponent out there. Kill squads everywhere. Yeah, that's, that's the whole point of Sapari all around the map. So, you just... Sand's going to struggle to hold expansion. Their only expansion they really have is that forward one. Not to mention to hold the towers, because that is a resource engine for Orzum. Yeah. Well, he keeps this base alive and all it costs with a few Sapari for Itlander. He has the economy to support it, to be fair. He has two extra bases. Uh, so losing those Sephara to keep his opponent at bay is a great trade for him. Yeah, kills the map control, kills the pyre gain. And behind this, oh, he can jump on nice the base. Nice distraction. Oh, Atlanta's almost going to be careful. Or, okay, Atlanta's not a no, bad move here, but they, they got to leave once they take the base out. Yeah. Oh, no, they're going for it? Got to oh, be careful. There's, there. a huge, there's a huge arc on Santa's side, though. There All is, the but the amount of shielding coming in for Itlander might hold the line. Uh, no, well, it keeps him alive anyway. Yeah, exactly. The Cascaders are too strong for those thrones. 
and there's not much frontlining going on here, so Santa can just keep on pushing. Yeah, the frontlining. The frontlining is going, killing everything off to the side. Okay, back to the tower, but only three fronts left out of the whole army. Santa has the army lead again. Uh, the counterattack comes on the other side, though. At the same time, there's a big push happening at that tower. But is it enough? If he loses his whole army, Itlander will still be dead in the water. He's doing his best to survive. And Santa, intent with this push, Itlander's waiting for his reinforcements to come back because he needs them. His army, no, yeah, his, his army population is still higher than his than Santa. But uh, it's but also Zapari. Needs... The whole the whole thing is upgraded Zapari. Hey, upgraded Zapari, pretty good. But well, in the hollow yeah, ground, yes. So with the Ark Mothers, they do great. But unfortunately, they just weren't there. The synergy was not present. Oh man, look and at now that. Santa with another pillar on deck, and Itlander has nothing to respond to. Yeah, another ancient coming down for Santa. And yeah, Itlander just. Well, it... Santa's still on four bases. That's still the issue for Santa. Santa's on four bases. Itlander's on six. As you said earlier, the mains are mm -hmm. pretty much mining mains out are done. just now. Five. Oh, Santa can mine a bit more. Lucky him. <laughs> a little bit, but not by yeah, much. It's, it is... The mains Andy. are done. The natural soon done. The It's these side expansions that are going to matter, and that's where Itlander's constant harassment is going to be paying off. Yeah, here comes Empire Unbroken, but Santa's army. This is a massive army. You need to. It's a massive disrupt. army. It's This is a big threat. Itlander needs to thin out this army and defend their base if they want to hold this game. Coming from the low ground... Pillar drops, Santa does have position around it, but it's kind of forced to retreat away. Edelander pushing Santa away from their own pillar, leaving the rest of the forces vulnerable. There's nothing coming out from the shower, but dead weight there. The Hallower is being the main asset. Edelander able to shield the units enough to push forward, and Santa gets pushed off. The army, is it going to get thinned? Edelander goes for it. Edelander wants this. They Edelander. need this. And they are going to get the Castigators down. That opens up the thrones. Edelander can, can push in. They don't need to stop. Yeah, he Not needs to get top of those Hallowers. The Hallowers are the expensive units. So with the tower there, it's going to be harder. He killed a lot of those Hallowers, but is it enough? As Santa now has the tower as a frontliner. He's killing the tower as fast as he can, but that's so oh, much that's damage. No, nope, that's the part. I get the Hallowed Ground bonus. They are solid. Extra shields, extra speed. They have nothing to worry about. Itlander unfortunately lost a lot in the process, but they they took out so much of Santa's army and burned that pillar, made the ancient worthless. Yeah. And behind all this, the Dervish are trying to go for a counterattack, but <laughs> Itlander played it safe this time. Yeah. Going for Fire Singers for the defense. Most doing a bit of damage. And yes, the reinforcements. Itlander can afford to get reinforced a bit more than Santa. Santa has his fifth base though, and he's going for his sixth at the same time. So he's catching up on economy. It's going to come down to the next army fight as Itlander is now behind on army. Army value for sure. Army supply is a bit close. The Ostrikes did a lot of damage last time. <laughs> Doing more damage once more. Those mm -hmm. getting decimated. Kind of unfortunate Itlander doesn't have much Sharu production. They like they have so much Aether. Like, it's very yeah. easily pivot into it and just spam out a bunch of Sharu just to help with awesome. that. Help with the extra damage. Especially getting rid of the Hallowers. It would have helped a lot of those extra. Oh, look at that. That base taken by. It has been detected, so. It has. It's, it's not going to last long. But that's the thing that Yidlander has. They have their army advantage. They they could have. They, they were able to afford losing what they lost to take out what Santa had. Yeah, but he can't keep doing that. He needs the next no, army. No, they can't. Win. He needs the big army. He can't keep fighting like that and losing battles. He killed no, a lot that of was, followers, which was important. They did. That was a setup, though, for the next fight. And this this upcoming fight is going to be the big one. And Santa's looking to find a way to k just catch Itlander out of position completely. And Does Itlander care? Is this are we just going base race here? Yeah, Itlander he might said, be. Yeah, he killed it, sent his whole army to deal with this. And now Itlander's heading back home. He has enough Sipari to help defend this. This base in the north, okay, Santa's just repositioning. He doesn't want to lose the base in the middle. They know. They, they, they learned last time. Itlander will take that from you. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it's, uh, okay, yeah, Santa defending, but at this time, Itlander defending with a small group of units. Uh, but Santa is just heading for the base in the west. He attacked the base in the east. Now he's ready for the base in the west. Mine's coming out here from Itlander to deal with this. And Separi are not long for this world. Well, yeah, but they're doing pretty well considering. Yeah, with the mines getting on top of them. Uh, yeah, this base. With that... the mines against Dervish, I mean, this upgraded Separi are, that's the same with Army Valley right now. Upgraded Separi do a lot. And it's a little hard to really gauge just based on army value. Okay. 
Huh? So Inlander so pulled Inlander's out of just, position? Yeah. The base. Inlander's got the distraction, gets the base kill, loses a base in the process, however. And yeah, there's too many towers here. There's enough towers that it takes a long time, so Santa has time to regroup his army. Empire Unbroken goes down the tower. He can still kill it. If really he can, but at what losses? The well, Empire Unbroken is just buying that much more time. Okay, units are not here, and here comes the Oshreks to start the fight. Uh, kind of missed, but the Cascaders get on top of the Thrones, and with only Thrones, they're getting decimated, but... The oh, but the Cascaders were too bunched up! Throne Swords got them! Itlander able to wipe out most of the anti unfortunately still losing most of their thrones. Itlander not able to get away unscathed. Their air force is gone. Itlander can rebuild, but it's just getting that much harder. And Santa getting getting the ancient on top getting on top of the ancient again. And Itlander. His army value is coming back up, but coming back up slowly but surely, but just a bit too slowly. The Itlander uh, coming challenge in for once again. Point. Coming in for a choke point is dangerous. Relying heavily on it's yet? all Hallowers, though. There's no frontliner for Santa Claus. They do have, they got the, they did get the Ancient, but without any frontliners, Itlander can just rush in with Sapari and just wipe everything out. Which is exactly what they're best. doing. Doing his best. Pillar, Pillar drops to, to what end? At yeah, the back of the army, Pillar's going to go down really quickly. Uh, most trying to expand other places to figure stuff out, but man, this is such a close game. No. I st we can't call it either way as both teams. Just have decent armies and about equal on bases. Itlander able to take the base of his opponents, the Santa, mining a bit less. So yeah. that's Itlander a pretty big adventure. Lander just did the make mining. a center base though. Their their fifth and sixth have held. The fifth got a bit harassed, but they're getting t getting a seventh in the center. Santa Sa heading back six there. bases. Okay, six Santa bases to seven. So or four Sa bases to five for mining ones. Ooh, Santa needs to be careful. He might just be caught out of position here. If Itlander wants to catch him on the way out. Uh, he can kill this whole oh, army with Santa has, Oh yeah, Itlander's got... They have population and value advantage. And here comes Itlander, coming from the flanks. He wants to jump on those Hallowers. Even though the Throne's attacking, it's only one Throne. Those are so many Sipari. The Oshrek comes in to kill the moats, but the moats don't care. Itlander wants those expensive units of the Sipari. He's jumping on top of them. No towers anywhere to run back to. Dodging the swords from Santa. And Santa, relying entirely on the Zentari in the Hallowed Ground. That's fine. Itlander can regroup. Itlander has the army. At this point, the army of value is going back on his side. Kills for the tower. Tower goes down pretty quickly. All strikes. Not much energy for all strikes left. And the throne is here, but the throne's to get it taken out by the castigators. And this time, Itlander seems to be going for it, jumping on top of everything. Tower just finishes to help defend, but might not be enough of defense. And the Sipari are on top. The Hallowers, Hallowers getting all taken down. The, the Ark Mothers saying they're, saying they're, they're a big. Their big protection field, but is it enough, Santa Claus? It's enough to it's enough to force Empire and Broken. Santa Claus distracted now, not able to defend their their fifth and sixth base. Itlander free reign has free reign now to just go around taking out Santa's economy, and this is all Santa has. They lose these bases, they're dead in the water. And that doesn't have much. He has the Hallowers which can dish damage from afar, but the Sipari are great at jumping on top of stuff, and Itlander might just be doing this. This might be his final push, but just gotta be careful of these final pushes. Those towers are so powerful. Yeah, that's make sure the Hallowers don't break you, and you'll be fine. Itlander pushing once again. Hallowers have nothing blocking them. Itlander able to push, and Santa has to give up the base. Itlander can't be stopped anymore. One of his only mining bases, the Hallowers at the back still dishing damage from afar, and Doing their best, but it's only three Hallowers against a full-on no. army. Yeah, Santa... If Santa had frontliners, those Hallowers would have a little bit more of a chance, but they just don't. The fear of thrones is so strong, Santa has used, has been using Castigators as the frontliner. And Santa's rebuilding a base at the bottom. Yeah, Santa's effectively mining from... Okay, it's still two bases, getting his third base mining, his yeah. natural is mined out, main's Natural's mined out. Third is almost mined out. True both sides, but Itlander has an extra base over Santa. Actually, two bases having destroyed one of them. Oh, this one's almost mined out, but that's getting there. Another small run by Sipari, but Santa was there this time. So this is more about giving army away, but Santa, Itlander behind it, going for the other base. Again, a distraction from Itlander paying off with another base as Santa's army is too small to really contend with this. And Itlander, they can take a base while also threatening the Ancient and provide and running by on the sides. Santa's doing his best. He knows this is his last life in the tournament. He loses this. He's out of the tournament. 
And he needs to fight for all he's worth. You look at the army value. 5,000 is not a weak army at all. There's a lot it's of not. army. It's a lot of high tech. And depending if it's mostly thrones, you can just get on top of them. But it matter when it is Zephyrus and more generalist army. So the army that can deal with pretty much everything. Just not as well as a specialized one, but they can deal with anything. And, and not only that, that the numbers. Like, yeah. Eatlanders are, like, the thing is that Santa's army is still largely Castigators and Hollowers, so that's it's good, but it's not going to deal with a bunch of frontliners. Yeah, it's, it's good against Thrones. It's good against Thrones. As you can see, Eatlander agrees. It's good against Thrones. Hence, not as many Thrones. Oh, the Thrones are chasing the Thrones, that's why. They were too busy attacking. Well, that's Santa for you, being sneaky. Oh, what?! Itlander cheeky doesn't even get rid of the ether expector from Santa's old oh, expansion. He, he took this base before. He he may as well just take the other bases. You know, no, that's the point. Yeah. He can afford it. I just want him to take the ancient now because the ancient will be worth how much? How much? Uh, how much power is the ancient actually, worth? Itlander, Itlander is maxed out in supply, so there's actually or population, so there's actually no reason not to go for that. Those expansions. Yeah. Okay. So how much? How, that's a big army. Here comes Heaven's Aegis on top of it to help defend it. And Santa's pulling back, doing some pull. It, he's a little bit of care of the agent. Okay, there's the ancient kill. Okay, how Just much? Get, she's at get 50? Santa out of the way. Go for the... It's 200. Is it 200? We'll no, it's 300 now. 300. And yes, yeah, 300. 300. We're 30 Why? minutes into the game. Yeah, 300 fire. And there's salvation because he doesn't care Just anymore. He has too much fire. <laughs> he just has too much fire. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't want to lose any units. Yeah. Base going down to Zentari, he's gonna go defend it. Empire broke, comes down on the on the base, but it gets cancelled. Not worth defending. And yeah, just playing through the motion at this point. Inlander is so far ahead. 10,000 army value, something we rarely see. Certainly something we can never see before well, the increase in population. So yeah, this is this is it! Inlander does pull it out! Great games from it. A great game from Itlander. Back and forth game with both of them taking advantage of disadvantages. Itlander showing his medal this time again, getting to the finals over Santa. Congratulations, Itlander. You are now up against Magical in the first match that isn't a rematch. Oh my god. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, this is a new match. Magical and Itlander going at it. So Itlander is. Of course, gonna have to win three games to get in. Match has to win two. We'll if see. he keeps playing, if he keeps playing like that, Lander might very well be yep. able to do it. But Magical has been or champion for a long time, and for a good reason. Magical knows how to play this game, so Lander. Okay, I mean, they, they win this, they'll be a double digit first places. Ooh, yeah, that sounds like Magical. After being like six second places in a row, now he's uh, just winning all the first places. They only three second places in a row for Alpha. Oh yeah, for Alpha. I'm talking about pre-Alpha. Oh yeah, pre-Alpha they were struggling. Yeah, I don't when have to Alpha. Yeah, when yeah, you started playing Alpha, it was like yeah. Yeah, Magical sort of had, like... Magical had had his experience as a place and was able to win yeah. it all. Like Santa had six in a row, second place, second or third places before finally getting a first place. But they are third now, so that's not really relevant. They're third now. I... Although they are super active, I'm glad to see how active they are. Magical and Eatlander. Going to be a magical match. We believe in Magical. And uh, we'll see which map Magico wants to go for. Uh, first map is going to be Frontiers for the finals. I forget about that, but Magico never will because Magico makes it to the finals every time and knows the first map is always Frontiers. He just knows the rules. He knows the rules and so do we. Oh, I forgot that the first map was locked. It is, yeah. Yeah. Good old Frontiers. Well, yeah, we'll be heading for the finals. Magico Itlander is... It, it, a few second places he's had. Uh, maybe if he wins. Actually, this is their gonna be if this is at least their second second place. If they win, this will be the first win. <laughs> but Ooh, it's their second order. silver if they if they lose. So yeah, it's still good on them. There. Yeah, tall order there. Oops. Tall order, but I think they can at least give it a good shot. Yep. And I I'm kind of curious uh, what he's gonna go for. What immortal he's been playing? A lot of Ajari. He's played some Zol before, but I feel like Ajari. For a long time, Ajari has been his main. He's played a lot of Ajari through the for the time, so it'll maybe mm -hmm. just Ajari for the finals. And Magico, of course. Well, so far we've only seen Magico play Mala, so I wouldn't be surprised for him to stick with Mala. And mm. we haven't seen Ajari versus Mala yet, so we haven't. I would like to see that. I 
magicals, I find often fairly opportunistic. Yeah. I didn't say sand isn't relevant. I never said sand isn't relevant. Why did I say that? Sorry. Anyway, I, I magicals can be pretty opportunistic, so I wouldn't be surprised if they went for Orzum on this map because thrones do well in this map. Hmm. That's true. Well, especially in the, depending on, I don't know, thrones are very good right now and shards are just yes. so expensive that they're yeah. kind of hard to get to, but once you do get them, they're like so, so good at just bringing those spaces where you can't go into or else get burned to death. Very, very literally, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta find, find the best way to attack into it. Hmm. Chari versus Mala for the grand finals. One up for Magical already, so. I mean, once they decide to think, no. Oh. Okay, yeah. well, they're, they're just yeah, they just want Yeah, they just wanted a quick little break to go to the... Well, luckily for them, the game gives you five minutes in the pregame screen. Five minutes, not quite enough, but it'll have to do sometimes, right? They only needed one minute each. Hilladar has picked Ajari, so Ajari is main for, for a long time, and Magic was sticking with Mala. Yo, we get the Mala, Mala Ajari setup. Hey, haven't seen that yet. No, we haven't. Which is also a fun... Like, Mal is about killing your opponent's units that use their blood to spawn Quiddle to help. And on the other side, we have a jar who's all about not letting units die. So another a nice little uh, way to get about it. So yeah, Magical in the top left as Mala in the blue, and Idlander in the bottom right as a jar in the red. With both just getting, getting set up with their normal thing, getting a bit of ether to begin with, before expanding most likely. I don't expect Legion Hall to come out, or Alter to come out before the expansion. Well, both I'm these gonna keep an eye on. No, they're both going for expansion. Gonna keep an yeah. eye on magical. They might do something tricky, but no, they're both saving up for the expansion. Yeah, magical this does like absolutely... tricky stuff. They do, but not today. They're gonna. They're gonna. It's the, they're ahead. They only have to win. Well, ahead-ish. They only have to win two games. Yeah, exactly. In this very early game on frontiers, I'm curious about the art of frontiers now. Let's see, red. What type of trees are red? I guess we're always in fall under maple trees. And the bottom west is, bottom west is green trees, purple flowers. Those are ferns. Are, are they ferns or are they... Those look like ferns. And we'd I have think... to ask. No, Ooh. maybe not. No, not necessarily. Actually, this is, no, no, those aren't ferns at all. Those are some kind of deciduous tree. Hmm. Yeah, we have no clue what's happening. Well, there's a lot of waterfalls, and we see. I'm not really a tree person, though. I don't know how. Yeah, I, I don't know how trees do. See, you tell me this. Okay, these are blood trees. That's uh, pretty straightforward. I guess so. Yeah, the red blood. Yeah, not really fall red. Don't. Order in clay, and just because of all the clay, they've absorbed it and turned red. I don't know. Nature works differently on. Actually, frontiers on Nuaf or shale. I think it's on shale. No hey. wait. Actually, don't know. Yeah, don't know. Yeah, they, they said for Fool's Bay, and yeah, we'd have to ask again. They have it on the map when it's loading up. I just never really looked. Oops. Oops. Uh, Sorry. Oops. Sorry, art team. Mm. And lore team. We'll know eventually. We know eventually yeah. when there's more lore that's more easily digestible, like in a book format or something, we, we'll know it a bit better. It's like, oh yeah, Frontiers with the first battle of Teen and Jor until Metro happens. Oh, okay, that's why it's a Frontiers. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's for dads like in the in the middle states that there have been a lot of wars for the frontiers. So I'm guessing mm. shale, but I don't know. Okay, both of them going for the pirate camps without being too annoying, just teapots being annoying to steal it. And really just magical being annoying with Oh, he lost one of them. Oh lost. this early in the game? That's a blow. Yeah, you wanna keep you wanna keep tabs on where your opponent units are. And and loses both teapots trying okay, to get the Okay, Itlander, Itlander can kind of run around the map a little bit now. And they actually yep. don't have to be, they don't have to worry about getting scattered out. They can do whatever they want. Yep. Magical's in the dark. Now, both players only heading for one pirate cap, ignoring the second one for now. And what is Magical heading for? Okay, got the God Heart. And yeah, n no tech structures besides the neural side so far. So needs offering as fast as possible, which makes sense. You gotta love the offering. Oh, catching him out of position though. Magical can micro for days, but especially with the help of the of the pirate miner dishing out a bit of damage as well. You sure about that? Those dervish coming in and look pretty scary. Oh man. Oh, right on top and 
Okay, Magical's a bit stuck. He's not happy about this. He needs to find a way to retreat and not lose his whole un all his units. Power Miner dishing some damage. You, you have you oh, have more than enough to deal with this hit ladder like you do. No, they do, but that Dervish is taking a lot of damage, and I mean, why go in when you can just go and deal with your opponent's arm? Well, okay. Is it a calls. Oh. No. Yeah, that's why. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 Well, that's Imagine why you don't go back there. Yep, you gotta be careful. Match goes always building more stuff. One further Godhard to get the upgrade on the Zakals is my best guess. And yeah, behind this, I'm gonna assume Wardens are coming out. So yeah, double, double Angela oh, into yeah. Wardens. It Lighter has been doing a lot with the Wardens, so it oh. totally tracks. Oh, nice body blocking here oh. from Magical, getting his units to stop him from getting to the tower, but the Dervish are attacking him what they want. Red Harvest comes down, though. Worst comes down, but the Atlanta can keep the units alive during the Red Harvest. They don't lose too much. They don't give away too much. Yeah, Just unfortunately, losing. they can't really kill anything. And there it gets trapped. Magical, taking back the early game lead. Oh, and then putting the Atlanta on the back foot. That was a lot of units he just lost, and Atlanta's going to have to play defensive now. Even, yeah, he's just going to lose his tower on top of it. And Magical, microing well, keeping his units alive. Doesn't want to lose some for nothing. Or at least not too many. No. Killing a tower is just expensive in general. It's it's gonna cost some things. And here comes the wardens. Yeah, the cost of going for wardens is you don't have as much uh you don't have as ground. many ground units because you yeah. went for double uh double ground units and Magico's gonna take the opportunity to jump on his opponent. He doesn't have anti air, but he has a lot of units, can do some damage. And biggins his exocalls on top of it. Okay, Itland are desperate. I'm gonna potentially risk their economy on this. Their Wardens should be able to hold this off, though. Yeah, there's a collar just falling. Magical. Yeah, mass hunters. Oof. Yeah, Magical can't hold this. Still, Eatlander's now relying entirely on an Air Force that Magical's... Well, Magical's basic unit can't help get rid of. <laughs> yeah, General says your first unit does help deal with this. Behind this, there are Frums out, so... Eatlander's going to need to get some Sentinels to help deal with his full Air Army. Or the Frums are going to run rampant and kill his whole Natural. <laughs> Or main base, whatever Magical decides to jump they on. They got three Wardens. I think they're going to switch to Sentinels, just because that's at this point seems to be what you generally do. Yeah. Oh, Warden's coming in. He has... He will have... He will have enough for, for a Deliver from Yo very soon. But is it soon enough? As the Frams are jumping on top of him. Oh, man. Are you going to okay, go for he's, it? he's just running home? No. Oh, no. Those units are out of position. There's no one No, one there's nothing. All. Nothing shoots up! Oh, Atlander should have gone for the DFE. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. First, Warden goes down. It's only one that goes down. But Magical sees a better prey. He sees the, the absorbers. The, the game. Well. Yeah. <laughs> the stage the game absorber. only is a strong word. Yeah. That's going to risk down. that expansion. That third from Midlander is wide open. Yeah. At the same time, Magical expanding his own turn. And Nisian. Okay, here comes the Sentinels. Two Sentinels against all those. Uh, slaughter Froms. It's decent battle for both of them. Just comes down to Micro. Midlander needs to keep his units alive and Two more Sentinels are coming. Atlanta going full air in this matchup. I can't say I'm surprised. Like I said, Frontiers is a map that really works well for air units. That's very true. Yeah, in between the main and everything, you have a lot of avenues of attack. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of places just that it's you can't really hit them from the ground. So if Atlanta can get air control... Ma like, Magical really has to get air control quickly. That's why we have the early thrones. Because if Magical doesn't have air control quickly, then Thrones are going to run rampant. Mm. Let's see. Okay, Arox coming in for Magical as well. So there's going to be need some other ant here, unless he wants to lose everything to Arox and Frums. Third base is up and running for Itlander. Mm. Magical is about it's to get up and running. Not secure. Oh, it's definitely not secure. This is going to be jumped on immediately. Well, it's up to the Arox. Yeah, we're Magical's sure. Arox. Should are they gonna define this game? Into, or, yeah, they're gonna define the entire game. Uh oh, and the units are all together. Oh, that was good defense. Yeah, doesn't get much. It gets one sentinel, not much else. Yeah, that was Magical nice. able to hold the line. Or Eatland are able to hold the line here. Yeah, there's not that much anti here. The wardens dishing out the damage. There's five of them. One's about to go down. Good micro to pull it back, but he brings it back in just a little too soon. As Magico takes one out, but he won't be able to get all the units as the wardens defend this base properly. And Magico is forced to retreat back to his to his home. As he's looking for the next transition, even more Aerox. <laughs> and that's going to keep them down on Aether. Aetlander 
They can force Magical to burn Aether on Aerox. They're not going to be getting Behemoths or any Spellcasters quickly enough. And Aru wants to go for Spellcasters against Karath. Magical needs that Aether to get those Dread Sisters, and the Atlander knows it. Yeah, so as long as they're not going to lose their air in the process, this can work really well for Atlander. Did he just embiggen his... Yeah, he embiggen his Aerox. Perfect. They did, yeah. Oh, can't wait to see. Yeah, okay, a bit faster, a bit stronger. They can just jump on stuff. Well, it takes a bit more hits. That's just the biggest thing. It's a little easier for it to get in. Yeah, okay. Here more comes health. the next push. More mass hunters. He's pretty much done with cause. He doesn't believe he's a cause anymore. And here comes the Aerox from the back, and that's the big story here. They're coming in on all of them. The, the Wardens need to split. Ah. They're not splitting quite well enough. Okay, oh. that's a decent split. Decent Absolutely. split, but it still sacrifices the third base in the process. Okay, the Aerox would survive. But yeah, it's the Mass Hunters. Yeah, there's enough frontliners at this point that the Wardens can keep attacking from the back. And it's another defense from it ladder for now, but Magico's next push won't be coming too late either. Hard to say whether those were worth it. Actually, Zapari coming in from Itlander, like the Aerox, hard to say the Aerox were worth it as the... You know, they did kill a couple Wardens, but now there's extra Zapari from Itlander, and Itlander knows, oh, well, it's all Mass Hunters now, so I can just go for more Dervish, and yeah, that'll do the trick. Yeah, you just look at the army value and can tell yourself, Atlander's not doing too bad. As long as he has a few no, frontliners, he's, fine. he's good. And here comes the Red Harvest. Magical wants to go for it. Another, another Heaven's Ages from Atlander try and defend this. Wardens from the back, dishing as much as they can, but this time Magical has the army. He used his pyre effectively and will get the base. As Atlander tries to come back to defend it, but it's too little, too late. Base is forfeit. Atlander cannot get any solid kills off at as an answer. So Atlander starting to fall behind. And this time Wraithbow is coming out to help to, to help deal with the anti-air instead of the Aerox. Going for a more consistent solution. And Teapot scouts at third base as he knew. He realized there was no third base there. Magical. Get a bit exposed there. Atlander knowing Magical is ahead. Well, if oh. Atlander's got to start thinking about how to adjust for that. Yeah. He, see, I, I kind of like this base for Magical going on the long way so you can't Get your air units between the triangle and the main and making it hard for ground units to get through, so it makes it a bit harder to get get on top of it. At the same time, here comes that's a big area for Magico. Especially if it, in an open ground like this, those mass hunters they have so much bigger of an advantage. And Itlander is not prepared to deal with mass masked hunters. Yeah, look, they might if they've upgraded the absolvers, they're fine. I don't know that they have. I don't they didn't see any House of the Fading Saints, so I don't think they can upgrade that. No, Oops. they... Those are not upgraded Absolvers. This is... This uh, is going to be a tough... Tough position for Itlander. Yeah, even with the Dervish coming in. Uh, Dervish are great dealing with those light units, but there's not that many Dervishes. Heading for this base, and Magico's going to let it be. He doesn't seem too... Yeah, he doesn't No, just cancel, cancel the base. Cut the losses. They, and... They're trapping Itlander. Okay, well, if the Absolvers get in position, that can be a big difference maker at the natural. Could, if they siege it, like, now? Yeah, there's low siege. Uh, no, that's too, that's too late. That's too late. They're going to get hit hard. Frontliners are out of position, too. Mass Hunters come in, taking some hits, but they got got rid of two of the Absolvers. One remains. Atlanta able to regroup around it, but losing everything in the process to try to save that one Absolver. Losing everything in this fight. Only the Warden survive. Everything on the ground is gone. Yeah, Dervish coming in from the back to hopefully do some counterattack, but it's not going to be enough. The Zorns are still here at the north. They can attack the Amber Room at the very least. Be annoying. Something, but yeah, it's not much. And now just wants to big in more units, make them more powerful for the next fights. And behind this, Magical. Magical's just got... Magical's a terrifying army. It's just not even reflect... It's... Got to look at the army itself because yeah, between them being embiggened and just the sheer number of upgraded masked hunters. Yeah, look at that embiggened incubator. It's really huge. And yeah, Magical just wants to stop his opponent from getting a third. He can jump into the natural at this point. There's not too many. Is the Dervish out of position? It gets eliminated. And yeah, Dervish are a great answer to this army, but you need a bit more. Well, most of them are dead. Yeah, you need you need enough of them and enough other units around to support them, and that's not there. Magical pushing in. God, it has this natural on lock. Itlander deciding, going for a counter push. Or counter harassment, rather. 
but does not have the forces to maintain it. And that's game. Magical takes game one. Yeah, so Magical up 2-0 really on this uh, best of five. Yeah, it's, it's a bit weird. It's like... Up one game to begin with. So yeah, up 2-0. Up a game, game only needs two. <laughs> so yeah, that is game one. Of Magical having to work really hard to beat Itlander. Oh yeah. I mean, winning that early fight really helped him out. Getting a getting a few of those units out and killing them, uh, getting uh, getting them out of position, and Atlanta needing to rebuild them to help defend with his with his whole warden army. This time he'll have another warden army, and maybe it'll be enough. Have to uh, to see if, if he decides to go for the same strategy or wants to change it up. We're staying on frontiers this time around. Atlanta mm -hmm. possibly going for the same strategy, just wants to execute it slightly bit better, and that could be enough to bring him to victory. Could be. Hitlander is... Hitlander... I mean, they kind of has some issues. Like, they were able to make the Wardens work reasonably well. It's just that you start getting into... Well, I mean, you got the Wardens, and that was all well and good, but then you started getting into... Like, the anterior that came up, the response to it didn't really work out, so... Yeah, exactly. Well, it's just, it's it's just, it lost steam. Lost. That was the biggest thing. Atlanta lost steam, and now it's gone for Zol, shifting off Ajari completely. Well, Aru mirror. So we've had one, one craft mirror, and we're getting our one Aru mirror. Time to go. No, we maybe. No, did we get? Yeah, we had more Aru mirrors. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, Marlo, okay. Marlo for Zol with Santa. No, Santa. Yeah, right. Magical and yeah, Magical and Santa. Were, that was game one. Right, right, right. Okay, so I, I like oh, mirrors. As oh, well. whoa, Itlander. Yeah, are they doing impressive. it? They're are they English. going for the Zol push? You can do it on Frontiers. Yeah, well, I mean, Magical knows about it, but Itlanders, their last ditch effort, if they lose this game, they're out, so they might as well go for it. Yeah, exactly. Magical's going to scout it immediately, sees there's no base on the way, comes in, wants to check out everything, sees there's yep. money for mining, sees there's two authors coming. He's like, oh, okay, I know what's happening. I know how to defend yeah, this. Yeah, early Zol. It's, it's Mass Bone Stalker with probably some Zikals, early Zol. Yeah, so Actually, not Zikals. Mass Bone Stalker into Thrum, so that even if it gets in the mid game, you still have options to summon Zol in the middle of your opponent's base. Yeah, so now it's figuring out how Magico's going to defend this. How does he deal with this? And he probably has a few different ways. He could go for I Cores, for example, to get that anti light damage. He could just get Mass Hunter and just try to all produce, but that can be harder. He can go for static defense as well, as there's pretty much a choke point at this base, so static defense can do a lot of damage. A little tough for Aru, though. They have to get the Rootway first. Yeah. The base is going to have to come out. We'll see what Magical decides works best for him. As uh, he's faced it many times for sure, as Santa was his practice partner, they've tried on each other for sure. Losing both teapots, though, from the get-go. All right, it's going to make it that much harder to defend. Yeah, figuring out where he's coming, how fast he's coming. And... Yeah, because Earthlander Magical... might go for, like, 16 Bone Stalkers. Could go tech up a little bit further than that before going for the altar. Like, which power camps are they going to go for? That kind of thing. No, we seem to be going directly. Are they going to go for the Heading directly for the base. Oh, that's weird. They won't get. Okay, it's pure Bone Stalker in that case. Yeah, coming in and oh, he got one E for not more than that. Okay, he's coming back. He saw his opponent had the Mass Hunters. He was maybe hoping he wouldn't get them so early, but okay, he has a lot of Bone Stalkers. But Magical's reinforcements come just that much faster. Hitlander looking to catch Magical out of position. That's not happening so soon. Well, the thing is, Bone Stalkers are individually Astrid. stronger this early on. Before Offering is upgraded. Yeah, gets and one. And they get the early hit. Symbiote's being a distraction. Hitlander looking to find the right positioning here. Gets a decent concave. Even gets a teapot yeah. in on it. Oh, that's possible wasted ammo, as Hitlander is just not as strong individually. I'm trying to wait it out until a they get the mana for Zol, or the Pyre for Zol. Yeah, it gets the cause on top of it. Uh, here comes the next part of the army. Teapot's coming in to soak a bit of damage. Uh, this one, yeah, they both need to micro perfectly focus fire the weak ones. Try to get some damage. Hitlander yeah. on the low ground. Magical pushing them back. Of course, this is why you tend to go for the pyre camp before you go for the, this attack, so you can have Zol on your side. Yeah, so it's not quite Zoling time, though. 15 seconds remain. And once it comes out, though, Magical will also have the, the Red Harvest. And with Red Harvest versus uh, Zolot, I'm not even sure who would win. It's pretty equal. 
he had the pirate lead to begin with, and with that, no. What? Oh, on top of it, Magical <laughs> Kid takes oh, it. Oh, man. Magical just takes two pirate camps. The two pirate camps that give him the immediate power. Yeah, oh, so now, now there can be a combo of Bloodwell and... Well, it probably won't be that. It'll probably just do Red Harvest followed by another Red Harvest. Yeah, but you could combo this... Bloodwell. Just to get that much more Pyre back. Yeah, getting Neuroside as well, so he's getting Offering as fast as he can. Uh, but here comes the units. And there's Zul. And there's Red, Red Harvest. Harvest. Is a counter. Do not care. Oh, that choke point is really wrecking it, Lander. Magical oh, wiping everything out. Yeah, the kills, the kills just being that frontliner. That yeah, choke point, it's simply not, it's not something you can hold on to. Yeah, anything, anything getting in there gets, <laughs> everything getting in there, including your own units, just get killed and turn into Quido. And it's, it's just so hard to deal against that. And mm -hmm. Magical just did it perfectly. Now we'll see, Itlander's still on one base, bringing the rest of his army, uh, trying to reinforce, but at this point, the Embiggen, are, the Embiggen units for Magical are enough. He's jumping on top of everything and tries to get going. As the armies are clashing, Magical pursuing Itlander as fast as he can. Itlander trying to run back. Itlander trying to run back as much as he can. And yeah, bring out some reinforcements, but at this point, Magical with his extra base, extra mining, going for... About three, four minutes now. This is gonna have a bigger army this whole time. Yeah, Lander has that... to Oh, is that gonna be enough? Magicals split up very him. intelligently. They can just Thank like you. this is it. Lander goes forward and then get hit from both high grounds. And behind this, Magical has enough power for the Red Harvest. It Lander does not have enough for Zoho. It Lander almost oh almost taking advantage of that split there. But Magical, Magical reacts enough to the wood. Yep. Yeah, Soldier action there. Yeah. Well, the tower was also a problem. Yeah. It actually is almost a better position now as Magical's away from any towers. Oh, but Magical's getting ready for another surround. As soon as Atlander tries to go in, he's going to get surrounded. From the I'm back. not sure taking that neutral tower. Just, see, the issue is... It, yeah, okay. There's the, there's the surround coming in. No, it's a new, it's, the thing. Yeah, there's the surround. There's the Red Harvest. Atlander tries to escape to the choke point. Gets blocked out. Magical trapping all the bone stalkers in here. I mean, they're taking, they're getting hits off, but it's just not enough. The red harvest comes in, and out goes Itlander's army. And with magical, uh, everything, the, the whole tournament. Magical has won. Break the game weekly number twenty-four. Congratulations to Magical. That will. That was a. That was a solid back and forth, solid little early game thing there. I mean, yeah. Heat Lander definitely tried. Didn't seem to quite realize that you had to go for the... Well, I don't know if they didn't realize, but, like, experimenting with not going for the early Pyre Camp, and unfortunately for them, it didn't work. Yeah. Well, you're, you're hoping you have just more units and able to do some damage to your opponent. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough. The coin for the Pyre Camps would have made a small, di a very good, di pretty big difference, honestly. Uh, but not this time. Magical holds and uh, takes home another tournament. They do. So, congratulations to Magical for a solid 3-0 win. Yeah, again, didn't drop a map this tournament as Magical does. Oh, yeah, they, they really didn't. Nope. Oh, yeah, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 3-0. Sheesh. Yep, Magical knows what he wants. He wants victories without any worries. Well, congratulations still to Itlander for second place, and Santa, like a third place. Still a solid placement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Flicky, always... coming back in here, getting fourth place. I yep. have not played for months. Yeah, great play from Flicky. Really, really good part. Yeah, first time back in. <laughs> or first time back in since BTG7. Yeah, it's been a while. Like four or five months at least. Something like. So yeah, that was that. Was that. So thank you to Simus for organizing it and like handling all this stuff. Thank you to the all the players for signing up if you want to sign up i'll send a link in the chat that will be relevant you'll understand why in 90 seconds or yeah i'll understand why now but you'll be confused for the previous 90 seconds mm -hmm. and the so you can join that and there's a tournament channel join the tournament's channel and that will get you the information about what's going on also the tournaments are in the events so the events at the top of the discord server you have to go into that in order to get an idea of what's actually happening 
Otherwise, yep. you won't get to see what events are running because that's how it works. Anyway, once you get that, then you'll be fine. And the events or the tournament channel, whichever, sign up. Next week is 2v2. So if you're feeling a little unsure because you don't want to go in alone, next week's a 2v2. You can get into that with a friend and it won't be quite so lonely. Yep. And even if you have no, if you don't have a friend with Immortal, uh, you'll find someone else to play because there's always some a lot of freelancers that just want to yes. uh, find new friends to play with. Yeah, you can join alone, and then we'll just put you with some other people who have joined in alone at, at right before the tournament starts. So either way, that works. So yeah, do you, do join up. Thank you as also ZK for helping with co commentary and doing the spectating today. Yeah, always fun. <laughs> yeah, it was it was nice to be able to just. Use my words and not have to <laughs> mouse around all the time. Sounds good. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, we can keep working on that. Have fun. But yeah, that built. And other than that, I think just thank you all of you for watching. And until next time, until next week, have a good night, everyone. <laughs>